Hey. Welcome to Down on the Network. This is CanCon 2019, the Australian 40K ITC Game Championships. Five. So this would be the end of Game a regular five. GT. Yeah. Or the second last round of regular GT. This is just over. We're just starting the second half of this, of this event. Yep. This is game five of an eight game series. It's going to be a epic. Goddamn marathon. Sitting here knowing that I have to talk for 12 to 16 hours a day for two days, and then probably like eight hours on the last day. It's been absolutely awesome getting the guys from Chapter Tactics on. We had them in uh, round three yesterday with Pete and yeah. Sean. I was impressed. I was dead set impressed with uh, like Pablo's acumen. And Pablo today. He was spot on oh, today. Mate. Call he made. We, uh, we had Pablo organized to come on uh, for round six today. And he sent us a message saying, when can I get on? I want on, I want on, I want on. So we're like, all right, come on down. Uh, so what are we streaming in this round? So we are streaming uh, your requested uh, game. Well, more specifically, you wanted to see Orcs. You wanted to see uh, Liam's uh, Mega Nob list. He is currently playing up against Josh Brody with Chaos Demons. Now, currently right now, Liam is the highest ranked Orc player in the event. Uh, uh, cool. And I think it's by, by uh, quite a bit, by a little bit of a margin. Uh, but I'm just going to go over those lists for you. So starting off, we will go through Liam, uh, sorry, Josh Brody's. He has a da -da 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 -da, Chaos Demons Battalion, which is undivided. He's got Bellicor, Bloodmaster, Demon Prince, um, with, and so it's the, the Axe. So it's a Corn Axe. Um, he's got 20 Blood Letters, 20 Blood Letters, and 22 Plague, uh, yep. plague Rares. The second battalion. Uh, this one has a prox, prox bringer, sloppy bar piper, scroll prox scrivener, plague bears, plague bears, plague bears. So that 30, is 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, plus a 22. And then, then, he then has the uh, feculent armor. Poochery. So this is quite. It's quite similar to the one we saw last turn. Unfortunately, you guys last game. So uh, he's got he's got mass plague bears. He's got. Um, a null more. I think these are quite three. different, but... But his, the, his tech that he's chucked in with it is quite, quite different. Yep. So he's going with two, two blood letter bombs, two baby blood letter bombs. They've got full 30s. Yep. They're 20 mans. He has Bellicor. He has the Corn Demon Prince. He has the Bloodmaster. So he has some very killer characters in there as yep. well. But it functions off the same basic principles. He has these three... Um, he has the tree, and he has the three heralds, and they all buff the absolute crap out of his... 112 plate bearers. So this is the third top table. So we're still uh, avoiding uh, the top table and the second top table uh, today with the mindset that we want to try and limit the amount of time someone's on the yeah. stream. Well, so, so the, the le longer we go into this, the less choices we have about who we stream. Because yep. we need to show you guys the top table, who's winning, what's winning. So these guys are both undefeated. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so these players are both undefeated. They're both absolutely in the hunt to take this event out. So it's not like we're not showing you, you know, we're showing you bottom tables. We're showing you a top table. Yep. Two undefeated players. There's only three tables with undefeated players on them, I believe. Uh, no, we've oh, got... Uh, so we have one... So the top nine players... Yeah, nine, we've got nine uh, undefeated have, players. I uh, have undefeated. So yep. four tables are j uh, uh, both players undefeated. Yep. And the fifth table... Uh, our main man, one of our early uh, adopters of the Patreon, uh, Ben Mulhall, with Orcs in his first Out ever outrageous. tournament, outrageous. Uh, is on four wins. So he's the next, he's the next highest ranked Orc player. And he's playing against Aaron Green, playing uh, Imperial Knights. So good. All right, and though um, onto Liam's list, he has a Death Skulls, sorry, no, Evil Sons, Evil Sons, my apologies, uh, Battalion. He's got a Warboss with a Big Chopper, Bare Bones. Um, then he's got a Weird Boy. Next he has one, two, three units of Ten Gretchen. 10 Mega Knobs. Custom Shooters. 10 Mega Knobs. Custom Shooters. Yep. 20 Mega Knobs. Ah! <laughs> Next up, he's got another battalion attachment. This one is Bad Moons. He has a big mech with shock attack gun. He has a second big tech with shock Which attack gun. Which is a Warlord. Well, yeah, that, the first one is his Warlord. Um, then he has another t three units of 10 Grots. Then lastly, in... No, sorry. Then he has Tank Busters. How many has he got? 15. He's got, uh, 15, 15 tank, busters tank, tank Busters plus 6 Squigs. Yeah. Plus 6 Bomb Squigs. Then he has... 15 looters. And to top that off, lastly, he has a Blood Axe Battalion with a, another big mech shock attack gun. It's the third big mech shock attack yep. gun. And he has another weird boy and another 30 grots. So he has 90 grots. Interesting choice of the Blood Axes. Uh, it's to get... Um, yeah, why, should, why is he taking that? Is it to get the Thinking Cap? I need, no, Thinking Cap's thinking, uh, Goffs. No, no, Thinking Cap is Blood Axes. For the second the second. Oh, so yeah, 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 I'm thinking Lucky um, Stick, sorry. So he's got, he's got two weird boys. He's got three... K, he's got three... Um, uh, what are the folks are called? 
Uh, he got three shock attack guns. Yep. He has 20 mega knobs. He has tank busters. He has looters. This is a shooty army. Yep. That hit, but that shooty army that hinges on this freaking anvil of 20 mega knobs. That you, he's going to mob them up. He's going to have one unit of 20 mega knobs. He's going to jump them. He's going to give them warpath. He's going to make them the scariest goddamn thing you've ever seen on a table. Yep. They're so hard to shift three wounds each. Um, the toughest four, toughest five. Uh, the Big Macs? No, um, the Shocks. The, sorry, the Mega Knops. Just gonna uh, pull up that codex. Double check. Oh, you pull up the codex as well. The race is on. Mega Knops, who will get there first? Uh. Got it. T4. T4. Three yeah. wounds. Yeah, three wounds. So he's got, but he's, he's got 60 wounds there. A T4 with a 2 plus save. Now, the only thing I think I might be missing is the KFF, but that only comes into play against things like Cause Wrath. Yeah. Against Cause Wrath, he, he falls down pretty hard. He hasn't got a KFF. He's going to have a 6 up save. And he's going to be taking one off for each shot. Apart from that, there's really like nothing else in the game. Maybe a Baneblade Cannon that gives these guys a crap save and takes them off in one shot. So he could, you're right. He could be doing it for the Thinking Cap. That is, uh, is an option. Yeah. Uh, and so we've got IT also uh, dead sneaky could be an interesting option with a um, with a shock attack gun. Yeah, uh, one CP to deep strike basically. So this is ITC mission five. This is precious cargo. We've got four objectives. Um, pretty easy for you guys to see. But if you want to circle them, we've got we'll, one there. We will one circle there. them out. One there, one there. They're pretty easy to see. They're green. They're in the. There's one in the middle of the four quadrants of the table. And they have gotten uh, corners deployment. I'm not quite sure what the name of it is. I can't seem to remember. They've got corners deployment, and it looks like we've me shielded with all the grots with the Meganov behind. Uh, of course, in, in this game, though, the only real thing that he needs to be worried about punching you and actually doing significant damage against the Meganovs with a 2 plus save is Bellicor and, and, and the Corn Demon Prince. Yeah. Uh, both of those guys will come in and they'll, they'll remove like three or four Meganovs at a time. But plus that, he's screening, like, I guess he's really screening for, um, for Smites, I guess. I, I guess he has got these Smites, though. But uh, he might as well. There is a few smiles. There's no need to take them early. He can always do jump. And hey, look, he's got a shooting army. Compared to the demon, compared to the demons, that orc army is freaking shooting as hell. He's got custom shooters on all his, um, on every one of his mega knobs. What is he got? Mm -hmm. Custom shooter. Custom shooter. He's got four shots at strength four. He's got he's got a storm bolter on every one of his mega knobs. More daka. They're bad. Are they bad boots? Or are they They're able suns, so it's a deep strike. So you can still go more dark. You still got more dark. You can't shoot him again. So you can't shoot him twice, though. But that's still, it's 20 guys, four shots each. 80 yep. shots. You shoot him twice, 160 shots. Fives and sixes are extra shots. And they don't, they don't take the negative penalties for shooting at, at, um, yep. at Plague Bearers. He will pound the unit of Plague Bearers a turn with those guys. Doesn't need to get in combat with them. On top of that, he's got, um, he's got looters to add, 15 looters to add on top of that. He's got tank busters to add on top of that as well. And he's got all the um, the shock attack guns. He has a lot of fire. People. He has a lot of DACA. A lot. A fair amount of DACA. A lot. A lot. All right. What have you got to say for yourself? Nothing. Got nothing um, to say for yourself. All right. So, look, I'm a big fan of this orc list. Uh, I was trying to work out when orcs first came out. I was trying to work out whether or not we could do a similar concept. Instead of using two units of mega knobs, having three units of knobs. Yeah. And end up mobbing up to a 30-man-ish unit would be yep. epic, uh, but I think the Meganobs are a good choice. Um, 100%. But yeah, they, they, they just get through stuff. Absolutely. Um, who are we going to chat? Who's joined us for this lovely Game 5? This yeah. was the game you guys requested, so if you guys are all buggered off and haven't come back... We blame you. <laughs> uh, we'll take a quick moment to mention our sponsors. We've got two major sponsors for this stream, that being the Army Painter, which uh, you'll see some of their rolling tests come across the screen sooner or later. And they are the provider of great hobby supplies. They do a great range of paints, um, battlefield debris, all sorts of bits, all kinds of technical paints as well. They've got everything you need to get your army done to a good standard very quickly. They're, they're quite unique in the way that they cater themselves. They're not catered towards the, the optimum um, top shelf competitive painter who, you know, artistic, you know, intrigue and getting into everything, the lights and shadows and all that stuff. This, this is catered to entry level players who want to get. Uh, their armies on the table and play them and get the most out of their armies and the least I guess they want to get them on the table they want to get playing games which is, you, you buy them to paint yep. but you buy them to play as well it's another whole facet of the, the game we play and to have them just sitting there unpainted it's a shame 100%. because they're expensive so Army Painter gives you a great way to get them painted get them on the table and looking very respectable like these guys they're better than just tabletop better than just you know 
chuck on a couple of base colors and hit him in the shade. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's much better than that. It's, it's like two levels above that. So give them a look in, guys. Definitely great. Our next major sponsor is OTP Terrain. They've been our supporters since our very first stream back in September. Lovely group of people. Um, bought it, it, Australian owned, um, Australian produce manufacturers. Always like to support Australian um, producers. Jump onto them. They're giving us 15% off with uh, the code that we've got in our sliding text. 15% off. OTP, 15%. Is, yeah, is the key code. You get 15% off um, for this weekend only. It's Australia Day weekend holiday. Till the 1st of Feb. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, four or five days left. Anyway, uh, they are phenomenal, what they're doing. 3D yep. printed terrain of very high quality, very high caliber. Anything, it ranges in scale. They do 8mm all the way to 32mm and everything in between. So if you're playing Titanicus, you pick up stuff for that. Playing 40k, pick up stuff for that. AOS, um, Malifaux, Infinity, all those great games. They have terrain to suit your needs. Go and check them out, guys. And use that 15% off. 100%. Because why not? <laughs> it's 15% off. Uh, so it looks like we are going, we're almost into the start of this game. Looks like I've got that big corn demon priest starting on the table. I'm not quite sure if I can see Bellacor anywhere yet, unless he's that small model behind Yeah, he's the one to the left. To the left? Uh, so Bellacor is a very small model. Yeah, he is. Um, it's quite tiny. So uh, Bellacor will be here. We've had the roll to go first. Looks like the demons have won it. So here's, here goes the handshake. Game's over. They've handshaked. They've shook hands. So <laughs> they've both got zero points. Jeez, scrubs. Let's see who starts their movement first. I, it looks like Liam's going to start first. But I thought Brody... I was pretty sure Josh Brody won the roll-off. I saw him roll on six. He may have asked uh, told, him to go first. Told Liam to go first. That's not exactly what I would suggest, but hey. No, that would not be what I suggest either. I would want to get onto the board and spread out before anything else happens. Because um, he's, he's, he gets the army. I, I, maybe, maybe Josh doesn't quite know how shooting this army is. Maybe. This army is very, very shooty. Uh, yeah, this is a very, very shooty orc army. Tell us what you think, guys. Hey, boys, that's going? OTP Terrain, thank you. I hope you've the shout-out. We literally just shouted you guys out. OTP Terrain's here. Who are we talking to? Is that Emma? I have to assume it's Emma. Get your Rome on diff. Um, yeah, when diff is ready, we'll send him out. Have actually, we'll, we'll, we'll do we'll that. We'll actually, table. we should do that now-ish. Right, give it a minute. Yeah, we'll yeah, look at yeah. this table, and we'll check out if there's anything there we can't see. Anything in these buildings... We're not, we're not seeing, we can't um, get a beat on. Apart from that, so hello Emma, how you doing? Lovely to have you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for all your support of this event and us. I uh, greatly appreciate it. So yeah, Liam's, he's, he's decided for Liam to go first. Well, I, I'd have to assume. Yeah. Seeing as I, I saw, I literally saw him bomb a six. Now, I, I'm assuming Liam's going to move up. He's just going to keep his guys in front. He, the, he might not, so he's going to mob up the Meganov's this turn, for sure. 100%. But does he to jump him over, though? I don't think he does. Because he'd be jumping them over unsupported. I think he leaves him where he is. Yeah, I'd mob him up still, though. I'd mob him up and um, use more Daka if, he, if he's in range. Actually, what is yeah. the range on those, um, those guns? Of which ones? Uh, the Lunas have a reasonable range. So, yeah, he's, only 18, he's only 18 inches on his yeah. custom shooter, so he's not shooting him this turn unless he the jumps. Well, that's yeah. fine. You don't need him. Just, the, just leverage the tank busters, which I think are 24 inches. Tank buses are 24, that's correct. Yeah, so he's probably not in, in range of the tank buses either. So it's probably just the, um, just the looters getting shit such up this turn. Uh, which, I mean, in the scheme of things, it's not too bad. He certainly, certainly has the CP to just throw at them. Yeah. He's got, he's got three battalions. So he's got, eight, he's got 18 CP. It's ridiculous. And he's probably got the thinking cap, and he's taken the, the, the extra wall of trade to get your CPs back. Yeah. So, yeah, look, he's got CP for days. If he runs out of CP, it's because he wants to. Does anyone ever really want to? Yeah, but you know. <laughs> uh, actually, I think... I think that's it for shooting. Yeah, he's, he's, sorry, it's 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 for movement. He's in a shooting phase already. He spent some CP. I'm guessing that's some more DACA, and he's opening up. Not wasting any time here, guys. We got two, hoard, we got two essentially horde lists, even though the orc list is a hell of a lot more on the elite side. But yeah, he's not, he's not wasting time. He's only got Good two on sixes. him. He only got two sixes. <laughs> that was the first. That was the first round. Two rerolls. Yep, added more. So, uh, so th Brody's doing a good thing here. Those two dice on top of his crate. He's keeping account of how many hits he's getting. So Liam's rolling fifteen at the time. So yep. he's, this is his third time rolling that. So he's gotten to three on his amount of shots. 
He's got the 45. All right, I'm going another three to... Three re-rolls. Yep, another one out of there. <laughs> Apologies, let's get that back up. So he's, he's going for all his, these are, those are all his hits. These are his extra shots now. So he's done his threes, he's added up all the hits he's got, and he's going to roll that many more shots. And now we're going to go for... All right, ladies and gentlemen, into premium Adam mode. Premium Adam mode. Only the top, only the top shelf. Looks like he only had about five wounds go through, which I find a bit hard to believe. Yep, looks like we've got more dice to roll though. No, no idea what these ones are for. Who have we got joined us, guys? Give us, who wants a shout out? Let me know who's in here. I will shout out your name. I will say probably something funny or amusing to go with it, or maybe not. Roll the dice, see what you get. Speaking of dice, segue. For the top, for the top shouter, for the top guy who uh, donates the most bits every every stream, you get ten of these down under network dice. So chuck some bits up, see how you go. The top one from each day gets ten dice. All right, uh, do you, you just unmuted this one, yeah? So I had this one on mute. Sweet. Totally not panicked. You got me coming through? Your word what? Can you hear me come through? Diffie, so Diffie's coming through. Is Diffie too loud, guys? Never. Let us know what the audio levels are like. All right, so... All right, we got Raymond Diffie on the go. There's nothing uh, different to what we pretty much suggested. Uh, there's a couple of Plague Bearers kind of uh, trailing back here, but other than that, we have... Yeah, Bellicor and Corn Prince, and then some Heralds mixed in uh, amongst the Plague Bearers. Uh, but everything is pretty much what you see uh, on uh, on the top-down view. Uh, taking a look at the Orcs, uh, there's nothing really out of line of sight here. We've got uh, just the Grotz all spread. Uh, you can see the uh, Tunes and Mega Knobs, obviously. Uh, we've also got the uh, Looters here, the Tank Busters here, um, and then uh, obviously the, the characters are all just mixed in here with the Shock attack guns up your top right hand corner. Nice. Can you ask him if he's mobbed up the mega knobs and get a count of the CP, please? Uh, sure. I'll uh, I'll just check. Actually, don't ask him if he's mobbed up. Well, don't interfere. Just get a count on the CP. See how many he spent. That'll tell us everything we need to know. Yep. That's CP. Uh, so uh, Liam is on 14 CP. Yep. Uh, and two, four, six. I believe these are 8 CP uh, to uh, Joss. Beautiful. All right, so he's yep. on to 14. So that's what, 2 for more darker, 2 for shoot again? You'd have, to, you'd have to assume? Yeah. Didn't do that much damage, though. No, he hasn't I mean, done much. See, so I can see uh, 2, 4, 6, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. There's like 14-ish Plague uh, Bearers dead. Uh, but yeah, that's that's it. Oh, a couple just been taken off now, obviously. Yeah, I think he's just uh, spent two CP to keep them and not let them over. I saw he take he took two CP off his pile, yeah. So I think that's the auto yep. pass. Yep. Um, and then he's just got to roll for that. He's got to roll three. Yep. We're straight into the bottom of turn one, and uh, the advance has begun. Yep. All right. Are there any other games you want me to have a quick little scout, or do you want me to come back? Uh, up to you, dude. Go for it. Use your judgment. Yeah, that's a bit of a scout. You guys seem to like it last time. Uh, if anyone on the stream actually has a specific game they want, to, want me to, to go check out, I'm happy to. Yep. We're certainly going to have a look at the top table. That being Eric well, Lewis versus... Versus uh, Kirby. Kirby, yeah. Yeah, Will. So Will from uh, 3 Plus Plus uh, is uh, playing against... Uh, so with his towel, uh, he's playing against uh, Eric's uh, Nid Carpet. Uh, so they're playing uh, Dawn of Water Deployment, and there is, like, it is covered in Gorn. Yeah, man. Jeez. <laughs> That's brutal. That's brutal. Uh, but then uh, Kirby's got uh, a fair bit of Daka with uh, with the towel. Um, that's what uh, Eric needs to, be, needs to be concerned about. 
although it does look like Eric may have uh, deployed just out of the range of a lot of the, the big guns that he's concerned about. Hmm. Look, I'm, All right. I'm not sure that's a great matchup for Eric, but if anybody can pull it out, I think it's him. Yeah, mate, I agree. Um, and I'm just heading over to uh, the second top table, uh, which is uh, Simon Gojevic versus uh, Jeremy Martino. Jeremy is uh, running the uh, Death Watch primary with uh, Ash Militarum and uh, the Knight uh, versus Simon's uh, Drukari uh, Harlequin Eldar led. Uh, so at this stage, uh, it looks like they're, they're still doing deployment, so uh, uh, that's that's still going there. Um, and well, those are well, we've got obviously the third top table on the stream. I have to go on to the next top two tables. What I might do is I might just go check the last table. Sorry, that's three. What's the fourth table that has, that's undefeated? Um, I should know. Um, so the, there is a fourth undefeated table. We're just going to try and pull it up for you, quick. So I'll just have a quick look. Uh, Come on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <All laughs> <all laughs> delay, Samich. How to clean a barbecue after Australia Day. Uh, you just chuck that baby out, you buy a new one. That's the uh, capitalist Australian agenda. Get on top of that consumerism, baby. That's what Australia Day is uh, about. Waldock and Jason Miller is the other undefeated, uh, which I'll take a look at. And also our man, Ben Mulholz, uh, got an uh, got, uh, undefeated uh, streak as well. Yep. So just calling on this game. Uh, Josh Brody is spreading out. He had his turn. He's advanced with everything. I think he's been... a, a I think from what Liam's saying, he's been a little bit, he's being a little bit liberal with some of his movements, and uh, they're just conversing about it. It doesn't seem that there's being any argument. He just might have um, measured a little bit incorrectly. It wasn't much in it, maybe about half an inch. But they are trying yeah. to play by the absolute strictest section of the rules. This is streamed. This is a very, very close to a top table, and these are both very high caliber uh, players. So they're going to hold each other pretty tight to the line, and I think that is just fine. Yeah. So uh, we're in the. Uh, so just gone past. Uh, Jason and uh, so Jason Miller uh, versus uh, Hayden Waldock, uh, yep. which are the fourth top table. Uh, we obviously had Waldock just on the stream uh, in round four. Uh, so Waldock, uh, they've got uh, what looks like hammer and anvil. Uh, Waldock's uh, being very, very, very aggressive, um, and he's just taking up the center of the table with like a million. Plague bearers, although he's play, playing against uh, Gunline Tau, um, and uh, and and Waldock walk past, and, and as, as I walk past, he's like, "All right, watch me just summon all the horrors." So it looks like uh, his plan is to, rather than drop down with bombs of combat that just get uh, blown away from, or uh, blown away by the by the Tau Overwatch, looks like he's planning to drop down with the horrors to yep. uh, well, through his own gunline. Oh yeah, build his own gunline. Not a bad idea. And he's got a lot of points. He's got 500 points to do that with, so he can drop one down, let him get intercepted, let him die, and bring him back next time. So there's a lot, lot going on there. That's pretty interesting. Uh, back into this yep. game. Um, it looks like, yeah, it looks like uh, Josh is just spreading out. Nothing too amazing is happening. Neither, neither of Demon Princes have stepped out of their bubbles. Uh, they're still quite well protected. Interesting to see uh, what he tries to get done this turn. Whether he tries to go for any large charges onto the right-hand side unit of Grotz. I suppose that probably is a very long charge, but it's pretty doable. Um, thanks to the tree, he's been able to advance and charge. Right now, they're both sitting on two objectives. If um, Josh Brody can make that charge across the bottom, he will cinch up um, probably a kill and most probably uh, and kill and kill more and hold and hold more. So that would be a big, big point swing if he gets there. Do you know yeah, if the tree is uh, impassable? Can you walk through the tree or do you have to walk around it? Sorry, what's up? The uh, question from the table, do you have to walk around the poo tree or can you yes. walk through the poo No, you have to walk around it. It's a terrain feature it's, and it's, yeah, yeah I believe it's deemed to be impassable. I'll Google that, I'll get that um, codex up quite quickly. Yep. Um, I'm about to, I have that wide up now. Uh, after setup is treated as a terrain feature. It cannot move for any reason. It is not treated as a friendly enemy model. Cannot be targeted or affected by any abilities. Look, it's not defined what kind of a terrain feature it is. So I actually yep. 
you actually would have to, I think, let the players decide what kind of train feature. Yep. Is. Yep. So I said I did. I said I didn't know, um, and I'm just walking back. <laughs> uh, anybody in the chat? Do you guys know? Is the is the Putri impassable? Chuck it back over to Diff. Yep. Unmuted. Now you're yeah, unmuted. People, people always try to deploy their trees on the front line. So it's actually very relevant to know whether you can move past it. Because most likely you're going to have to move past it. So that's, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, anybody in chat know the answer there? Please let us know. Yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting to, uh, to have a bit of a stroll around. I'm really liking this, uh, this roving mic idea. All right, looks like we have already jumped. Oh, so he's failed that charge in the bottom right. Um, I was of the opinion that um, if he had made that charge with those plague graves and those, with those grots, yep. he would have got, it would have been a four-point swing. Oh, sorry, three-point swing. He would have got hold more, kill kill more. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, that would have been a, a big swing in this game. But as it is right now, no one killed a unit on t in their turn one. Uh, both just hold the objective and no one got any secondaries. Speaking of secondaries, what, did they what pick? are they? So uh, Liam picked Mark for Death, the Reaper, and Headhunter. Uh, and uh, Josh picked the Reaper, Recon, and Headhunter. So, can you say this again? Uh, Liam picked Mark for Death, yep. Reaper, and Headhunter. Yep. And Josh, the Demon Player, picked Reaper, Recon, and Headhunter. Reaper, Recon, and Headhunter. Yeah, I think they're both chosen pretty well. The only one I would suggest might not be the best choice is Headhunter for Josh. Josh choosing Headhunter might not be the best, because all of his characters are going to be way, way in the back. Yep. Thank you very much, uh, Ozhammer, for, uh, for hosting us again. They've been hosting us all weekend. It's been great. Uh, along with uh, big thanks to Frontline Gaming for their hosting. Uh, Best in Faction uh, podcast uh, also hosting. Yes, and Glasshammer Gaming. Glasshammer if Gaming. If wake up and get the message. Peace. <laughs> all right. There's a lot of people walking around here. There's a bucket of people. Uh, it's a car also, park. I just started hosting again. Thank you so much. I think that's what you just said. Never mind. Yep. Uh, just moving up some grots here. So we're already, to, already into the top of turn two. So it's been quite, quite a good pace. Yep. It's, I really wonder when... Oh, sorry. He's just advanced his uh, Mega Dogs. So yeah, he's trying to get them into range. He's trying to get some shots out of them. Uh, the other question is, when is he... Where are, sorry, where are the um, Tank Busters? Uh, tank Busters. I'll draw them on the screen. Uh, so his head's in the way at the moment, but the tank busters are here. Yeah. And the looters are below them. They're and those, here. Those looter looking guys in the top, those are the shock attack guns, yeah? Yeah, shock attack guns, all three of them are up in the top corner. Uh, you've got some uh, weird boys and the, uh, and war, the boss. war boss in there. Now, so which one was Bellicor? Was it this guy? Uh, yep. Okay, circle that for us, because he just blends in. He's just on a bigger base. So that's Bellicor. I think the red guy is the corn guy, obviously. Yep. And those are literally the only two models that he needs to be afraid of in combat with the Mega Knobs. Apart from that, he doesn't need to fear anything else in this army. Yep. Because the uh, he has two legion units of blood letters. Uh, and they could yes, which uh, which are deep striking in. Yep. One of the things um, that might be worth considering uh, is Liam uh, could de jump a Grotz. Uh, so you could deny uh, the deep strikes. Yeah, so basically three. you could yeah, take, the, take a unit of grots and uh, de jump them all the way along here um, and take up the rest of the space and then you end up leaving the bloodletters not being able to yeah, drop down on turn two. Down, yep. um, look, it'll cost you a unit, but let's but see. It's, it's going to lose. So next turn, I think Liam loses three units of grots. This bottom unit, this unit, and the, the one at the top. So yep. probably three units of grots. He doesn't care, he's got six more. Uh, he has not mobbed up those uh, Mega Knobs. Yeah, actually, actually, right, he has not. Uh, that's interesting. He may have decided he doesn't need to, and he'd rather go a first wave, second wave kind of approach. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, looks like we're probably going to be jumping into the psychic phase, which is going to happen on this turn. If not, we're straight into shooting. And I'd say with the, from the amount of dice, we're straight into shooting. Yeah, crazy. So this is uh, this has been Mega Knobs shooting the plague bearers. So he's going to be hitting on sixes though for minus one. This is Blessed Pop more darker, but he hasn't touched his CP. So he's got, yep. he's got to be hitting on sixes. And sixes are extra shots. 
Bugs. Looks like he's got a couple of looks like he's got a couple of sixes. No way. No freaking way. That's pretty good. Unless he's played more darker in those No, fives. that wasn't. No he, no, he picked up the fives and sixes, then counted out the sixes. Okay. So, yeah. But it was still solid. But he should be doing the sixes because they might as well play grass. Or maybe it was just sixes then. That's a phenomenal roll. Uh, unless he did more Dakar, but then. Yeah. yeah. So he saved three from that. And he saved Thank three you more. Uh, for five joining down. us, uh, Tarquin Rex. So yeah, there's five five play bears down. Megadob shooting kills five play bears. There you go. They put oh. your feet up on the box. It's bad. All right, so we are we are hammering away uh, through. Uh, we're over halfway through the eight round event. Just over. Not even an hour over halfway. 35 minutes to be exact. Yep. There is such a long way to go. So round one was a very low scoring game uh, turn with just simply the uh, one uh, hold more. So hold one each. Yep. Didn't kill anything. No hold mores. Yeah, it was pretty pretty low scoring round. Oh, what it, sorry. The last one, turn one. Yeah. Yeah, turn one. Nothing happened, guys. Uh, they're, they're both being pretty cagey. I think that's what Josh Brady was expecting, giving uh, making Liam go first, that he would have a, a pretty wasted first turn um, because he'd mostly be out of range of his 24 in shooting with the tank busters and the Mega Knobs. Literally just have shock attack guns and, and lot, uh, Lucas to worry about. And now he's, he's going to start to eke away. Although this, this bottom unit of um, Plague Bearers seems very depleted. It does. In fact, if he manages to gun that one down with some looters, uh, those bots on the right-hand side, and essentially that objective is safe. Oh, looks like it's another six or seven down. Oh, these are the no pains. Uh, one reroll. Another six down. How's it going? No. No. Yeah. Uh, it might interfere with their game, but it doesn't interfere with us. No, nah, it doesn't bother us. Yeah. We've got, we got a bit of a crowd watching our top table game. Um, but, you know, it's, it's worth a watch. Yeah. It's a spectator-ish sport. Well... <laughs> The models are pretty. It is a spectator sport. Everyone is watching us right now. Exactly right. Exactly yes. Right. But, you know, for the casual, uh, you know, tournament goer. Yep. Yalthrug. Yalthrugger. Yalthrugger. Why am I so bad at pronouncing the names? You're a horrible human being. I love this. I love this <laughs> Orkless as well, man. I actually, I actually adore this Orkless. Yep. They're just doing a kill count. While you were gone, we had a um, Liam and, um, and Josh had a bit of discourse about some of the movement he was he, he'd done. Yeah. Um, that this bottom unit actually he he had him moving back about an inch and a half. Um, he measured him where they started the deployment, and he said, you know, you rolled like a ten. Um, the front guys have moved like eleven and a half. He's like, which one put him back? And he put him back. Um, and he, then he mentioned a couple of other things, but found found nothing else of issue. So, that's all good. Look, I honestly think that's the right way to go. They're both, they're in, they're both in contention to win this event, and yep. to act in any other and act to act in any other way would be wrong at this level. Yep. Uh, so this is the this is the fifth round. Don't let anything slide. Hold each other tight to the line. Play a good, hard, fair game. Yeah, I think um, think uh, in watching Josh uh, with the clock, he's uh, he's very. I think he's very concerned about getting his turns in. Yeah. So there's three plate bearers left from that um, bottom unit. I'm not sure if they've done morale yet. Uh, I believe that may have even been. Uh, no, no, he's still. He's still. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. He, he's, he, has a, he has quite a bit of shooting. I haven't noticed him do his shock attack guns yet at the minimum. Hmm. Yep. So he's uh, using some CP guys. Looks like he's down to under 12 now. So that's pretty good. And he is counting out. Um, maybe he did two of his shock attack guns at the same time. Maybe. He four dice. Dial it up. What are you going to shoot with this? 
Uh, just gonna be shooting plate grabs, man. What else no, 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 no. I said, sorry, what is doing that shooting? Uh, I thought it was. Um, it's a lot of shots. It is a hell of a lot of shots. I thought it was shock attack guns when you rolled four dice, and I thought he was just doing it two at a time. But that is a lot of shots. There's more that, that it's, that's like the maximum amount of shots shock, two shock attack guns can get. In fact, it looks like more than 24 dice. Uh, bomb squeaks. What's the range and how do they work? No, not even close. Um, uh, the range is short. Uh, they hit on a two plus. Uh, they're basically a, um, another rocket. Could be short range and, and, yeah. and much better at hitting. Um, he has six could be the looters. Could be the looters shooting again. Yeah, it could be the looters. Yeah, the bomb, see, bomb squeaks there are assault one, so it's like, well, all right, that's definitely not them. Yeah. The looters are about the only thing that has that amount of DACA. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, if you buy, if you have the Mega Knobs and they're all in range, then yeah, that'd have more, even more than that. That has, that have 80 shots. Yeah. I mean, there there is an argument for jumping them out exactly 24 inches away from this front line and blitzing them. Which uh, ones? The Mega Knobs. Because yeah. you, you could be 24 inches away from this front unit of, of Plague Bearers, be out of essentially charge range uh, from you. No, they got the five, tree though. They got the tree. They do five plus D6 though. Yeah. Or oh, plus two on the advance though. So they could move up to 13 inches. Yep. Uh, and then they have 11 inch, 11 inch shards of 24 inches away. Yep. And the, it's, but he'd definitely be out of charge range of Bellicor and the Demon Prince. They could not make that. They could only yep. move 12, essentially. Yep. They'd be able to 12 inch charge or they would, would be out of charge. So that, he, could, he could definitely do that. But the thing is, he doesn't need to do that yet. Yeah. The onus is still, he has the shooting. On top of that, he has the counter punch. There's no reason to commit yet. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I'm just going to call you McGill. <laughs> but yeah, it's probably shoot again, Ludus. Uh, is that just McGowan? Probably. Uh, we need you to either confirm or deny the presence of McGowan. Trying to get used to all the different handles. I'm going to say it's McGowan, my main man. A lot of, a lot of main men. We've got uh, seven plate grades being picked up from that top left squad. So he's thinning the herd. He's absolutely thinning the herd. I wonder how many he's killed so far. He started with 112. Yeah. And I certainly think there's... there's just just well, a couple. There's probably less than 80 there. So he's probably talked up a reaper point this turn. Yep. Ah, uh, here comes the shock of that guns. Only three shots. No hits. Oh boy. <laughs> Shock attack guns, guys. Uh, this has been morale. Looks like he's rolled a six, but he's going to take the three instead. So he's going to lose one, two, three. Three more dudes. Yep, we're all good. Looks like we're about to jump into... Yes, we're about to jump into the bottom of turn two. Still got three plague graves left. I wonder why they didn't take morale. Doesn't look like they, those three guys took morale. He might have, he might have uh, auto passed him. He's only got four command points left. Possible. It's very possible. Now he needs to make that charge. But if he does make that charge, he takes it off him. He's only going to have, I think there's only one grot on that objective. Yep. So even getting three plague graves onto that one grot, he's taken it away. Yeah, but then if you look, it probably isn't on the objective, the Plague Bearers, so they probably have to charge those Grots. Yeah. Um, which doesn't... Which Liam can then counter-charge. Ch oh, very easily. So those, guys, oh, those guys are dead. He's just, just trying to get hold more this turn. Yeah. And the, that, that is worth the trade. Yep. Getting getting the points lead in a cagey game is huge. Yep. Uh, so Liam doesn't look like he got a kill. He got a Reaper point and a, and a, a point for holding. Yeah, so uh, let's just bring up his score sheet. Yeah, he's just put down a one for hold one and yep. one for reaper. Now, I'd like to point out, these guys are in the bottom of turn two, and they are 42 minutes into this round, plus deployment. Yeah. They're, they're good at going at a good pace. Yep. And with armies like this, the game slows down considerably as soon as you both start getting into combat. So... <coughs> That's a good reason to be cagey in the first turn or two. Yeah. I, I legitimately think with armies like these, well, Liam's army especially, 
you want to stay back. You want to wear people down a bit. You've got shield to absorb everything if they have a, against a shooting army. And then slingshot into one big punchy turn, get your opponent's best units, and yep. secure the game. And I feel as though uh, Lee, uh, sorry, uh, Josh needs to send a unit. Oh, no, because they always drop the bloodletter bomb. Um, so, Denise and I'm guessing Luke from the Normal Blokes podcast in Queensland have joined us. Yep. And uh, Denise just said a comment about uh, Luke's hair. And uh, Luke, sorry, Denise has, and Luke's defending, Luke's defending Liam. <laughs> uh, we, will, we will neither confirm or deny the presence of a ball patch. Just going to leave it there. If it was a big enough bold patch. It needs to come back in a year's time so we could put some branding. Like we did to Ducky. Yeah, I did just confirm the presence of that bold patch, by the way. Yeah. Oh, bad man. Uh, so, I would think we would see Josh go up to... Uh, he's probably going to get seven points this turn. He's going to get hold, and if he kills those bottom right grots... Actually, he actually doesn't have good odds to kill them. Three plague berries. Maybe one's the side. Just four attacks, hitting on fours. Two hits, winning on twos. He's not doing that great a job. He's not going to kill. He's, he's not killing ten grots with two two wounds. <laughs> no. uh, but he's going to hold that objective. So he's definitely going to get three points. Is he going to hold the objective as long with as, he makes it, as long as he does not ask bomb that charge. Now let's say he hits that charge. Yeah, as long as he gets that charge, he's going to get three points this turn. Minimum. No, because if he charges in against those uh, grots, the grots then pile in. Huh? The grots then pile in. Yeah, it's true. Actually, yeah, that's true. He could... Yeah, he could tie him on that. Yeah. He could... Uh, I could... I, well, there's only three plague bearers. Yeah. He could more than tie. I wonder if they're in range now, then. Because if he had a thought of that, he would have just advanced them to guarantee he has all three on. Yeah. Um, he's just doing another advance. Still in the movement phase, guys. He's, look what he's done with his other unit of plague bearers. Just want to draw a line across that. Because that's his, his blocking out the screen. That's the only thing that unit of plague bearers there is keeping all his characters alive. Just one unit of Megadox drops in behind there and gets a charge on like any, any character they charge is dead. Yeah. Like four Megadox can actually account for that Demon Prince. Five, six, you can put seven into them and those other three can still account for another character. Uh, there's blood letter bombs. Uh, I believe two, I want to say two blood letter bombs or is it three? Uh, two blood letter bombs, two, two 20 mans. Two 20 man blood letter bombs in reserves for uh, Josh. Uh, and that is it. That, everything else is on the board. It, everything else should be on the table. But uh, I, I don't know. I'm not a fan of 20 man blood letter bombs. I'm not a fan. Sorry, guys. Oh, sorry, Josh. You're fair. Uh. <laughs> All right. Uh, and yeah, no reserves for the orcs. The other thing um, that that Liam could potentially doing, obviously he hasn't mobbed up those uh, those mega knobs. He could look at oh, oh, oh. he could look at uh, the the mega knobs and do jumping them uh, separately. So sending a uh, one unit of mega knobs, you know, for example, he could send a unit up here uh, to the top left, uh, which which could clear the, start clearing down while the other mega knob starts clearing. Uh, this area. I think what's got basically, I reckon, we're obviously in um, turn two, still in the movement. Uh, Josh ain't gonna drop these blood letters yet. He's gonna wait till turn three. Well, uh, see, Josh has to drop his blood letters. And he's gonna have to drop his blood letters Josh, before the grots are screened, before the grots are gone. So, so he's gonna get a chance in his next turn to push the grots out. But so, so I reckon one of the reasons why um, Josh may have decided to go, uh, so make Liam go first. Uh, is because uh, Liam then, if he wants to, to jump the uh, Mega Knobs, uh, he can't, well, it's got to wait three turns if he wants to do it after the drop of the Blood Letters. Yeah. Uh, which I guess is my, and you're not going to wait till turn four to, to get those Mega Knobs in there, I don't think. I think you'll do it earlier than that, but yeah. hey, we'll see. But here's the thing, yeah. He's got two. He's got still got two layers. Actually, he's got, he's got 90 grots in the table still. Technically, right now, he has just charged those um, plague bearers in. Yeah. That might be a mistake. He's, yeah, here comes the pilot with the grots, and there goes there goes his uh, chances of holding more. 
has got to pile in, and there's probably equal three guys in there now, three to three. Um, but he has been denied hold more probably. He's still probably achieved his objective. Uh, he's probably, well, he won't deny contested. hold more. Oh yeah, in the consolidate, you get a few more in. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I believe that uh, Liam, after the attacks are done, which will probably do nothing, um, he then piles in another three inches. Yep, here it comes. Yep, there's the other pile in. His dad's going to outnumber him. He's going to hold that objective still. The bomb right This here. is why you come to Down Under Network to tell you about the obvious things that are about to happen. If, you had, if, you had, if, if Josh Brady had two over there, he just yeah. moves in advance all three of those playgrounds on the objectives, yeah? I does would. Not, does not charge him. He holds it over him. He's well, I mean, you don't kill it. I mean, he didn't kill anything with it. He wasn't going to kill him anyway. The three players yeah. versus ten grots, he wasn't going to kill him. So he might as well just move in advance onto the objective. He, and he would have got him two points. And you know what? Like, if there's ten grots there, those ten grots overwatching. Could have killed one. Could have, could have killed one. Yeah. They could. It's, I mean, it's, not, it's not that un. Like, you yeah. could kill one. You could kill a play bro with ten grots so, in yeah, combat. That play just there just lost. Uh, didn't gain. Um, Liam ain't much, but it cost Josh two. What's happened here? Oh, they got straight into. Yeah, it's so Josh is back. Like, they're not. They're not. They're not pulling any punches, guys. This is straight into the top of turn three, and while Josh is putting new scores. So it'll be. Just Currently, still, it's hold still one. Still, no one has killed a unit. Well, these play, these three plague bearers are going to die. They'll, they'll, they're dead for sure. Hundred percent dead. And there's decent chances of bumping up another one. Yep. Yeah, so he's got a 122 man unit of plague bearers. And that's the one he's got behind his line, for bracketing out all the all the, uh, the jump drop. It's quite clever, he needs to, he needs to do that. Uh, then he's got his, his 330-man. One 30-man is down to three guys left. And I'm, I'm going to assume that there's about 10 to 15 missing from those two 30-mans in the middle. Well, 10 to 15 missing from one of them. So it's not inconceivable that he, he pops two, gets two marks for deaths yep. and gets two kills this turn off Plague Bears. Now look at this wall of gods coming out. This absolute wall of gods. This is just there to push back the blood of the screen. Yep. He's just going to wall them off and he's going to have to see he's going to his loops. That's the stop to get him getting wrapped yep. and getting tied around. So you create like a, um, almost like a horseshoe at the end of your line and that stops them getting around your flanks to wrap up any models. As long as you keep the Grotz bases closer together than the, the 30 mil two, 30 mil bases, 32 mil bases on the plate bears. They can't get between you, they can't wrap you, and you tie off your ends. You tie yep. off the end of your line. And he's also, oh, what? Well, he'll put them in, tw he'll put them in 24 inch range to shoot. Yep. Um, they're 18 inch range guns. Oh, sorry, yeah, you're actually right. Yep. It, actually, um, yeah, he still might not be in 18 inch range. Look, uh, I hope that uh, that Liam has put the, the Mega Knobs far enough behind the grot screen so they that can't the blood letters can't declare them charge. and then fight twice so fight kill some grots and Pile then in, punch fight through um, fingers crossed so that'll be it's going to be 40, 42 41 or 42 attacks yep actually it's, a, no, it's 41 attacks 41 attacks they'll be hitting on threes unless they've got a herald it doesn't have a herald so hit on threes um, then they'll be winning on threes. And they might get. Up. They might might get reroll ones if he pushes the blood letter. The, the, the um, corn demon prince, corn demon prince up. Yeah. Uh, I I wouldn't. But Me either. you know, there's he, he's a dead man if he goes. Yeah. If he leaves, if he leaves the plague bearer screen now, this far away, and doesn't get a charge, he's dead as shit. Yep. He's just <laughs> he's just loot, he's just lunified man. Like, it's a technical term right there. <laughs> he's dead as shit. <laughs> Shaya. Yep. The other thing I'm uh, curious about, um, I might do another rove in a little bit because I want to check some of these uh, these distances a little bit closer. I'm not confident that he can't put stuff here. Well, what would he want to though? Well, I'm not saying he puts um, mega knobs. Like he could drop some form of shooting unit. He could drop, and maybe not right now, but there's a lot that could drop back here. Yeah, from my um, point of view. Because of where the he would need the corn demon prince to leave that area, to, in order to commit anything to that back line. Otherwise, yeah. the corn DP come back and he kills whichever unit he puts back there. Yeah, but then he's back. Huh? Then he's back. But still, like it's a it's a one hundred and forty odd point corn demon prince. There's yep. nothing here. He's not willing to trade that for in this Yeah, fair. Of those of those killer units, I would I would happily be like, seems good to me. <laughs> uh, Panics wants to know when Martino is going to be on the stream. Um, there's a good chance we could stream him. Uh, I reckon we will stream him in round six. 
Uh, I'm of the opinion we probably won't have a choice. Well, if he wins that game, I think we stream. I think we'll have yep. to uh, I think we stream whichever one is the winner of that game. Whoever wins that game, we stream. I want Death Watch. I want Death Watch on the stream. Uh, yeah, that's true. Look, we'll if Jeremy, to, if put, Jeremy put, wins... Closer to, closer to the end of this, yeah. we'll put it to the people. You guys let us know. We'll give you the options. You guys tell us which one of those games you want to see. Well, I know how much... Look, the guys on Chat to Attack this is probably coming on and they want yeah. to see Death Watch. But the only problem, <laughs> the only problem with putting them on during that stream is we're going to be sitting there not talking about the game. I will talk about the game. We're talking stats, though. We'll, we'll talk both. Uh, we'll do both. Fine, fine, fine. Uh, yeah, you can use the looters to jump the back squad, try and wipe out those... Um, yeah, those 22 guys, and then dump the uh, the, the uh, tank buses in there to wipe out the characters. Yep. Um, now, shooting that back unit is a good idea. It's actually a good idea for those looters, because that creates a lot of issues. Yep. That pretty much forces Josh to either push or rewrap, and uh, commit another unit to rewrapping and blocking out those uh, uh, strikes. <laughs> yeah, Hunter, I will only talk about the game <laughs> if it's a third watch. <laughs> okay, that's fair. All right, Martino's on. Win or lose, Martino's going to be on next year. Yeah. Sorry, Jeremy Marigold. Jeremy Marigold. Uh, if you guys haven't listened to that chapter tactics, go back and listen. Um, I think it was two or three chapter tactics ago. But it was. Peter Falcon got in there. He was talking about prominent Australian players. And he said, instead of saying Martino, he said Marigold. Keep in mind, he'd asked me who some of the prominent players are. And I told him about Jeremy. He's gone back to back here. Um, hilarious. Um, <laughs> he was just put on the spot. Couldn't remember. Yeah. Also, if you're interested in having a chat with uh, or having a listen to the... If he loses, I don't want to see Jeremy Marigold's face. <laughs> <laughs> well, you won't see his face. You just see his, the, the uh, caveman-esque... So I just appearance. put a link into yeah, okay, the uh, Chapter Tactics uh, podcast, the episode, the one after the one we're just talking about, which is uh, the one that we were on. We were on. These two uh, beautiful voices, beautiful faces. Well, it was a podcast. You don't get to see our beautiful face. You know what, just um, take a screenshot of this, all right, uh, then play your podcast, and away you go. Alternatively, see if you can find the screenshot that Panix has of Mr. Calamari. Huh? <laughs> Wait, which one? Is it the one that he sent you? Uh, that was Rory, on, I think. Oh, was that Rory? Apologies. Yeah, yeah. It was Panix that sent you that. I've, already, Rory then. I've, shown the, I've shown the people, I'll show them again, I put it up on my phone. Yeah. It's pretty good, guys. We need to make it into a meme. Be like, he's got how many mega nuts? Question yeah. Mark. yeah. Spank, bank, Tato right there. Animal. Um, I'll let you know though. I just got I just got a message from Eric uh, a little while ago. He got seized on in his game. Okay. Yeah. I thought he, he thought that was enough, uh, good enough, and he had the time in his game to send me that message. I thought I'd share it with you. All right. Because uh, I got my finger on the pulse, baby. Pulseless community. Now, you guys are about to behold some majesty here. I'm not sure you guys can handle it, but that is a screenshot Rory took of me yesterday. Spread it, put it into a meme. Put that into a meme, guys. That is deserving of glory. Look at it. It's horrible. Look at that beauty. He scored who, what? Who did what? Who charged what? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are in the bottom of turn three. Uh, and <laughs> Josh is like, where the hell do I drop these blood letters? Yes, well, yeah. Oh, Just, no, sorry. He's got a, he's got a three-man Plague Bear unit, I think, somewhere in there. Well, he, he can't be done with his turn, can he? Is, is Simon done already? No, sorry. Is, uh, Liam's is, already entered his scores. Oh, yep. wow. He got kill one and hold one, so maybe he actually did kill those. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, he did kill them. Oh, he's trying to work out what fits, what's, if anything's going to fit between any of these bases. Oh, so fair. Oh, so fair. Where, where the squad's at, sorry. Yep. Yeah. Yep. This is why you want squad differentiation. It is. It is. Although, like, squad markings don't make sense with orcs, do they? So you don't, do, you don't, have, to do, you don't have to do squad markings. Okay, you just All do right. a dash on the base or something. Well, not even All right, so for example, um, uh, I've got... All right, my um, horrors from my, uh, well, uh, sixth edition uh, list, when you didn't have a million, you just had a yeah. couple of units. All right, um, uh, they had, uh, some had skulls 
on the base, yep. and others didn't have skulls on the base. Like, you can do small things that are clear enough without detracting. Like, you could have um, uh, bases, and one of the units has tufts of grass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, and the it other be, unit be, doesn't be, have tufts yeah. of grass. You could have units that are Sector Imperialis bases, and there's, like, a number of different styles. Some are just a mesh. Others have the uh, the grid, so you can you can do lots of things without much effort, I would suggest. But anyway, uh, uh, the so biggest issue is people chop and change their army so much that doing painted uh, squad differentiation um, makes it difficult. Okay, you are Josh Brody in this moment. Is the bottom of turn three? Where do you put the blood letters? Um, if I'm Josh Brody in the moment of turn three, I'm going. I'm boned. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Liam says hi, guys. Yes. Hi, Liam. Back to front. Uh, Back to front. All the way around. All the way around. Scrub. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Uh, so for those uh, that are uh, <laughs> <laughs> paying attention at home. Ah, oh, ow. What was that for? He got gotcha. It's a family show. He got you, man. He I did say it. hi. I was going to circle it and do it, and then this guy assaulted me. Yeah, that's good. Where's the T.O.? I, I want to. do it again. Yeah, you probably would. <laughs> You filthy animal. Um, so uh, McGowan says, paint your rims. That's that's definitely an option. Um, I'm a bigger fan. Uh, look, I think you can do. If you're looking at competitive 40k, all right. If you're looking at competitive style 40k, yep. uh, and you don't want to mess too much with this aesthetics. Aesthetics, yeah. All right. Then it is very difficult. If you're in a competitive 40k and you want to have a nicely painted army, uh, but you know, whether or not they're all the same coloured rim, whoop de do. Like you have it all right, unit of ten has red rims, unit of two has you know ten has blue yeah, rims. Yeah. The other thing to keep in mind, not every unit has to actually have a different colour. Just every unit ne next to it has to be a different colour. Yeah, exactly. So let's say you've got all right, there's a chance that you might run thirty grots, thirty grots, thirty grots. Alright, so you go red, blue, green. Alright? And in that one game you want, you know, four units of ten. And you don't have four different colours. Yeah. Well, as yeah, yeah. long as the yeah. two that are share the same colours, are deployed uh, ages away, yeah, yeah. doesn't matter. Fine. Um, I will notice that he's left this conspicuous area here. I might want to circle that general <laughs> area. Um, there's a conspicuous little half moon area in this general vicinity, um, which would appear to be in the shape of uh, 40 blood letters. So here's what I would have done in uh, Josh's position right there. All right. He's obviously he's measured out. He's measured out, um, you know, where he wants to put the blood letters, but it's not going to be a gotcha moment. I know it was a gotcha moment at, uh, at some previous events that we won't necessarily talk about the, the exact scenario. But um, you can say to your opponent, "I am pre-measuring with these blood letters. Put your blood letters down where you want them. Yep. All right. You know, and then move everything else around. And then once you finish moving everything, say it's the end of my movement phase. I am putting them here. Yeah. All right. Yep. Compared to Having to make everything line up, you can pre-measure. So pre-measure using the models exactly rather than right. tape measure. Yep. And don't, don't, if someone does that to you, don't be a ridiculous human being. Yeah. Just let them do it, man. It's, it's nothing out to the world. It's perfectly reasonable. So, it looks like this is the point where the blood letters will be coming down. Yep. Oh, he's got one last advance roll. The Corn Priest has moved up slightly into the bottom. Yeah, so we've got the um, and Bellicor, Bellicor and the Corn Demon Prince yep. uh, in that bottom bottom section there. So, <coughs> so the reason he takes Bellicor, do you know why? Go for it. Death X. Yep. Because you can take him in a Demon Army and get Death X. Yep. Uh, so uh, that, that enables you to win, the, to win the mirror match. Yep. If he plays Demon on Demon, his Demons get the 5 plus, your Demons don't. Bang, your Demons win every time. Um, So, yeah, uh, he's, he's down here. Pop these two grots and pressure up towards the looters. Yep, there's probably enough space there. Yeah, I, I he's measuring it, he's out measuring it out now. Right now. You might be right on the money, mate. Would you drop both blood loader bombs down there? I, I don't think you need to. I think you only need like five on the charge. You only need like five or six. I think if you put two blood loader bombs down there, it's a waste. Uh, not only is it a waste, then his entire army just scoots just up, scoots up and elsewhere and the blood loaders are done. I, I think game. you drop one where I, where I was thinking, and you drop one down there, because uh, at least that one gets you gets you real actual points right now. It'll, get yep. you, it'll probably get you kill more, 
Uh, or if not, it'll put you in a good state to get killed more. And it's holding you an objective. Yeah, yeah, absolutely split the mate. You're spot on. So, uh, which is probably another reason why uh, Liam keeps those uh, Mega Knobs apart from each other. Although, well, interestingly, the Mega Knobs have been relatively close together. I wouldn't be surprised if Liam has left the, um, the, the backup plan of basically, all right, so let's say in Liam's turn four, a couple models move there, a couple move model there, mob up, jump where you want to jump. So we're not ruling out that he might still mob up those um, Mega Knobs, yep. but it's, uh, you know, we'll see. Just going to point out, we are literally just gone over one minute. We are one minute, sorry, we are one hour and six minutes into this game, and we are at the top, we are at the bottom of turn three. This is a game that's going to finish, guys, and I'm very happy about that. Well, I do, I do think uh, turn four is going to be epically long, yeah. uh, but I think it's going to be brutal. Well, there's no <laughs> reason for um, Liam to hold back. All right, so we've got the, one of the blood letter units dropped down, there. Uh, dropped down there. See, I'm not, I'm not even sure about that. I mean, it, he could declare, so there's a, there's a unit here. If, if that's within 12 inches, he declares on both of them. He, 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 he easily eats the unit in front but of him. But there's a model here as well. Yeah. So potentially he's looking at, at declaring multiple units. He should. He should definitely. Um, well, and he should literally declare everything within range. Everything else within 12 yeah. inches, freaking declare it. Uh, can you bring up uh, Josh's list again for me just for a sec? Just want to look at that HQ section. Uh, Bloodmaster. Bloodmaster. So the yeah. Bloodmaster is currently oh, okay. sitting here. So he's going to be hitting on two then. Yeah. Yeah, it, with Bloodletters, unless it's Tau, declare everything in range. Yep. Uh, in response to there. the question of whether it's hot, it's actually not that hot. It's um, nowhere near as hot as yesterday. Look, nowhere I think it's all, um, uh, is all over it. perspective, though. It's it's 30, pr probably 35, though, still. It's still hot. It's just 10, <laughs> de it's just 10 <laughs> degrees Celsius less. Yeah. But, you know, we're under 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, he is putting another unit at the top. He is splitting. I told, yeah, it's, it's yep. actually what he needs to do. All right, so would you... S Here's the thing, though. I reckon you're going to see that uh, that top bloodletter unit, that top bloodletter unit, is not going to be here at the end of turn four. I doubt either bloodletter unit is going to be there at the end of turn four. Uh, look, I think I think there's a possibility that the bottom bloodletter unit... Well, going to get a wrap on somebody. I think the bottom bloodletter unit might wrap something yep. uh, and might be okay. Actually, uh, this guy right here, you put a dot on that dude, that's the wrap target. Yeah. 100% man. You don't declare that one as a charge. You, you go in, you kill that one, you move towards that as much as you can, and you wrap him with you consolidate. Yep. But then you just get counter charged by Meganobs. And you're dead. So, yeah, like... The top one, they just get shot by Meganobs. And they're dead. I think what I would look at doing uh, is, depending on which direction he wants to go, and I think he would, I would personally be start, uh, if I was the Orc player, uh, I'd be trying to uh, clear out this section. Uh, well, yeah, he just needs to pick one of his objectives to gun for. Uh, yep. Pick one, invest in it. Um, look, I honestly think he can take back the bottom one quite relatively easily. The top but, uh, one's the, the, reason, the reason. Well, see, I reckon he can take this one back relatively easily, and he's further away from the two princes. Well, you think about what's going to be on this bottom one at the end of at the, end of turn, at the start of turn so four. Blood letters. Just going to do some blood letters. This one, though, you've got to go through blood letters and plague bearers. Yep. So the bottom one is the one you, you're going to invest in. And the top ones, you're like your future prospects are trying to get your whole more, probably turn five. Yeah. And yeah, looters are still, you looters are still orcs in combat. He could use the looters to kill the, yep. the bloodletters if he wanted to. Th the other thing we're throwing out there in Liam's favor uh, is if he does try and wrap this guy, all right, uh, he could to jump the guys out. Yeah, that's very true. That's actually there, there's a lot of bag of tricks. Yeah. A lot of bag of tricks this orc list can do. Um, that's not to say that, I mean, we're still very early in this game. I know we're three turns pretty yeah. much in. Um, we're still early in this game to the point where you just don't know what... Uh, you know. Yeah, Jim, Jim that's all, we, at the start of the game, we were like, what are Megan to worry about here? The Corn Prince and Bellicor. Yep. Apart from that, nothing is going to chop through them. But the Corn Prince and Bellicor could probably kill a unit of 10 in the turn. Yep. they probably do it. We're going to do a run. Back to prime time, Adam. The primest of the times. Who are you going to check on? We're going to check on uh, check on Eric, Marigold. <laughs> uh, who else is on our top? Um, check on Mulhall for us. Good shit.
So Diffie's going to go and have a look. So we're, we're almost halfway through this round. We're about an hour and ten minutes in. He's going to go check on the game state of the, uh, the uh, four or five top tables where we got undefeated players. You good to go, guys? Let us know if you can hear Diff coming through in a sec. I should be uh, coming through now. Yep. Please confirm Diffie's audio for us. He's going to Roman. Roll high. Uh, so just, yeah, the Blood Ladies have just made their charge into those grots with 3d6 all plus them together with a reroll. It's very unlikely he fails that. He's still yep. 4 CP as well, so we could attack again with um, one of these units. I doubt he's going to, though. Uh, Yak Hunter says the audio is good. A couple have confirmed it. You're good to go, mate. Awesome. So just clarifying, yes, that is 4 CP left for Josh and 8 CP left for Liam. Um, and for those who are interested in what uh, powers uh, Bellicor has... Uh, Bellacor has uh, in, uh, Infernal Gaze and Gift of Chaos. Uh, and what's the what's the power that's been cast on those plague bearers? I'll, uh, I'll I'll just have a quick look. Is that miasma? I'm going to assume. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, yep. cool. So they minus two to hit. Yep. All right. So we're um. Yeah, so I'll have a look at some of the other tables. So I think um, most of the, uh, the rest of that, you should be able to quickly, easily see what's going down. So we're going to go to our, uh, our patron, uh, Ben, and see how he's going. Come so on, Ben's Benny. playing Ben's playing as Double Knight. So not the exact list he played in the first round, but pretty close. Uh, it's more, more guard in it, though. So there's some uh, uh, infantry models with mortars. There's quite a few mortars here. Um, there's a uh, Lehman Rust. And then there's some of the baby knights. Uh, orc wise, oh, it's a lot of orcs still alive. <laughs> Any idea what you're uh -huh. up to? Turn one and it's all over. Oh, okay. Okay. So Ben Ben's uh, uh, not not looking uh, not looking good. Oh shit! Uh, looks so looks looks like this might be uh, Ben's first ever tournament loss. Well, dude, he's made it to the round five of the ITC champions without a loss. I think that's respectable yeah. as all hell. Yep. Um, sorry, I'm going to get out of the way of these guys. Um, so, just heading around to uh, Eric Lathuris. Sorry, mate. Apologies. Uh, just heading around to Eric Lathuris. Yeah. Uh, playing against uh, uh, Kirby from 3 Plus Plus, uh, Will, uh, and his Tau. So, the Nids. There's still a lot of Nids. Um, a lot of nids. Uh, some gene stealers have uh, done their little uh, pop up uh, from behind some uh, line of sight blockage terrain. Uh, oh. On so what it's looking, looking very good from there. Uh, fire warriors and maybe a commander. By the looks of it, cool. uh, riptides, riptides and broadsides are a fair way from them. Uh, so yeah, it looks like looks like it's probably that. Um, the score sheet of that game. I can probably find it. Beautiful. Uh, this is the uh, top table right now, guys. So we're going to score from that. <laughs> okay, so it's turn two. Um, and uh, Will just looked at me, shook his head and said, I haven't killed anything. Um, Eric's on... Uh, Eric went second by the looks of it. Uh, Eric got four points round one to uh, Will's one point hold objective. Uh, and then we'll go hold one again in round two. Uh, and it looks like, uh, yeah, so this, I don't know how many uh, turns that's, uh, this game's likely to get, so I'm not sure uh, specifically right now, what the are round, So we've got to assume they'll go to about three or four. Hopefully they get to five at least. But look, this look be the, that'll it, be the first game of the event Eric hasn't finished and with his 180 models, so. Yeah. Yep. Although the, the Tau are um, throwing a hell of a lot of dice to turn. Yeah, they are, they are not chest clocking. Um, by the looks of it. That might be a mistake. Hmm. We'll wait and see. Yeah. Uh, Mar check on Marigold and Simon for us, brother. Yeah, Marigold. <laughs> I'll, uh, I love it. So that that was essentially the top table right there. And it looks like it was... Uh, was it 8-2 to two in Eric's favour? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm switching over to no, 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 Simon. No, no, no. no. Uh, it was, it was 4-2. to two. Eric's still in his second turn, though. So it okay, yeah. uh, hasn't, hasn't entered scores yet for sec uh, second turn. For, but for, uh, the I, state, it's pretty pretty sure he'll really be, get three points. It yeah? will be eight to two. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, heading on over to uh, second top table, uh, Marigold versus Simon. Um, 
So Simon uh, has hold one, hold more, and yep. Jeremy has a hold one, kill one, kill more, and three of his secondaries, which were um, Mark for Death, Old School, and something else I can't read very well. Um, I'm actually unsure uh, if that's uh, up to date or what turn it is, but uh, yes, they're on turn two. All right. So, so it's a, a lot of games. Tables that are going a bit long in the tooth, well, compared to the one we're watching right now, which is speeding yeah. along at a healthy old pace. So, yep. Uh, but they are, they are chest blocking, and it's looking fairly even. Simon yep. has 49 to, to Marigold's 33. Um, who else was looking at? I was looking for Waldock. Yeah, yeah, right. Waldock, mate. Okay, so back to this game right here. We've just been picking up Grotz. So he's made a charge with his Plague Bearers. They're picking up some Grotz in front of him. And the Bloodletters... Oh, sorry, the Bloodletters at the top. The topmost Bloodletters. Looks like they have failed their charge. That's bad. I'll, uh, I'm near the table. I'm actually right near the table. I might just, uh, I'll just confirm that for you. One second. So basically, we've got Plague Bearers, uh, yes, that have made the charge, uh, that are charging into uh, the Grotz green. All right. Uh, it's a little uh, tense in this little uh, position. So before I, I don't want to get too far into it. And uh, yeah, all right. Did they fail? Yeah, Bloodletters up the top failed. So what was that? I, I didn't miss that. Yeah. Yes, Bloodletters up the top. Uh, well, top center each uh, failed their charge. Ah, uh, boo. Yep. Boo earns. Yeah, it's bad. Um, so just so, looking for Waldock's game, mate. Yep, just walking past Waldock now. Uh, so Waldock uh, has looks like he's well. All the pretty much all the fire warriors are gone. Um, the broadsides are still there. Uh, I do not want to charge broadsides. I've seen some horrible things going on there. Like <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be a bad um, time. Yeah, but uh, as far as uh, yeah, there are, there are quite a few horrors on the table. So it looks like he did use that to summon and uh, drop as many of the Fire Warriors as possible. So that uh, looks like uh, that worked out for him. And he, he seems pretty pretty happy with, with how that's going. Yeah. Um, all right, and I'll uh, walk on back. All right, so just back to calling this game. So he's chosen not to pile into the Mega Knobs, which is an obviously a good choice, even though he is negative two to hit. Um, we've had some pile-ins from... Oh, no, sorry. I think we're into the top of turn four now and these scores have been put in and Josh is up by one point I'm guessing that is from Holdmore getting a couple of successive Holdmores um, but apart from that this is a very very close game and even if it goes to six yep. turns I don't see it being a crushing win or loss either way no no so those mega knobs are staying apart by the looks of it um, uh, they aren't going to uh, sort of bridge that gap and trying to mob up which was a, a potential option um yeah, I do wonder where, where whether or not he just goes over and um, shoots the bloodletters and stays out of charge range. Yeah, I think he shoots um, the bloodletters and he charges the plague bearers. Yep. The the, the bloodletters are so much easier to shoot and kill than the plague bearers. And, and then got... move move the move the grot screen up. I'm coming back. Move the grot screen up to to right on the bloodletter unit, so yeah. the bloodletter unit can't move. Yeah, that's the other but don't right. but don't charge them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chuck it back over. I do want. Give me one second, apparently. I'll get to turn stuff off. Um, so, Master Strider, the low scores so far, they might hurt the winner a bit. Actually, at this level, um, right now, you just need to get wins now. Now that, you, now that you've made it through to this half of the event, just get whatever bloody wins you can. Because the amount of... So, we've got what? We've got nine win winners at the moment, yeah? Yeah, we've got nine winners. So, there's going to be... There's going to be four to five if there's no ties. And then there's going to be two. You just need to... You just need to freaking be there at the end to be in a chance. So whatever you got to do to squeak through a win, just to get to that top table. Because that's where everything is decided. All right, jumping over. All right, really interested to see uh, what you guys think of this, uh, the roaming chats, uh, whether or not you like them, uh, whether or not you think it detracts from the current game you've got uh, on the stream, or if it's uh, really good to, to get an idea of how those games are going. Thank you, Waltz. That is a good, good name. Thank you very much for, uh, for you, Waltz, hitting that sorry. follow button. <laughs> uh, thanks for the follow, dude. In sync. 
All right. Yeah, just, just Master Strider, at this point, you just got to stay ahead of the pack. Just keep freaking getting one point wins. Does not matter. Keep getting them. Yep. Well, on top of that is the ITC multiplier for how many rounds you win as well for the ITC points. Yep. So, for example, all right, so Ben, who was the ninth player who's undefeated, uh, player who's playing down, uh, has, has said he's going to lose. Bugger. Um, so, you've got eight players that are undefeated. Yep. So, at the end of this round, assuming no draws, four, four winners. Four winners go into round six. Yep. You can have two winners. Two winners go into round seven. You can only have one. But then we have guy, round eight. Then guy, we have round, yeah, eight. round eight. The last round, someone, if they want to go undefeated, needs to push off yeah, the last contender. So the, actually, round seven, you have, the, you have essentially the last two undefeated players that yep. are possible, yep. are technically possible, um, because we don't do the breakdown to the, fly, to the top eight. Yep. So there's those last two games are technically both top tables. So whatever those last two games are, we will be streaming seven and eight. Are you aware um, of how it works with uh, an event like this with Swiss? Uh, and so let's let's say um, I don't know. So let's say Morisoli wins all the rest of his games by 42 points. Just an example. Yep. All right. And Eric wins all the rest of his games. And it gets to eighth round. Eric is the undefeated player. Yep. He's ranked number one. Morisoli is number two, but they've already played. Does Morris? How does that, that, they don't play again? I'm assuming. No, they don't. They so both I wonder how that works. They both play down. They both play down. Yeah, they All both right. play down. Um, so it would be third place playing Eric, and fourth place playing um, Morisoli. And Eric would naturally, of course, Eric would. If Eric ties, auto wins. Eric wins, auto wins, of course. Yep. Um, but Morisoli would need to win with Eric losing to to Sinchip. Yep. Um, uh, Morisoli was just one example, obviously. Yeah, yeah. The reason why I picked Morisoli is because there are, he lost against Eric. Right now, there are half a dozen players who, who could fit that bill. Right oh, now. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. Sponsorship plugging time, guys. So we are sponsored by two amazing groups. Right now, we have OTP Terrain sliding across our sliding text thingy thingy down there. Um, they have uh, an amazing, way. incredible 15% off deal for Australia Day weekend. So from today to the 1st of February, first of February 15% off using their code, which is OTP 15%, yeah? That's correct. And it will scroll up in just a moment. Basically, in the shopping cart, you'll have an enter discount code. Smash that in there. It's www.otpterrain.com. Right. They have significantly supported this event with price support. They oh. are 3D printers of very high quality terrain. They do everything from 8 mil to 32 mil and all the games in between. They cater for all your needs. They're really good. They're growing exponentially. Australian um, built, operated, owned. Very good to support them. Yep. Our second major sponsor is uh, the Army Painter, who have been happy enough to come on board. We'll be talking to Adam Abramowitz, who you might know from the best general. He's I'm one, I'm one of his oldest Patreons, so I use that to, to get him to get the foot in the door, mate. Hey, man, I send you 20 bucks US a week. Fuck it, listen, listen to our pitch, please. A month. Oh, yes, a month. Sorry, yeah, sorry a week. That'd be insane. Yeah, also, please, um, please listen to our pitch. Yeah. And they were receptive to it. They're like, hey, you know, we want to get involved with stuff down there. Uh, so they've come on as a major sponsor for this stream. Whether that becomes ongoing, we'll see. See if they enjoy this content. But they're also going to be scrolling along the bottom. Uh, look out for them. They create great, great hobby products. Mostly paints and painting accessories. But they're geared towards the everyday painter. They're not geared towards your, your super high detail artist who does like 15 layers on a, on a cheekbone to make sure it's defined. Yep. This is for entry-level painters to get you good, good-looking stuff on the table quickly so you can enjoy what you love about the game. And if you enjoy painting, you still get a lot out of the system. 100%. It still suits you. You still get a very satisfied, very worthwhile result at the end. It's actually an amazing thing, especially for new players. Yeah, so if you're interested in painting a stupid number of models uh, in a short period of time, then uh, to a, a very good standard, then check out uh, the Army Painter Facebook page. You'll be able to find a number of videos that were put up with uh, Nick Nanabadi uh, from Nice at the Game Table uh, and uh, him, him, uh, him and Adam painting. A stupid number of orcs from Sprue to uh, Dunn. Uh, so I'm just going to chuck a couple of links in the chat. JF McCoy, um, tell, us, tell us what you like about them, dude. Like, we, we've, only, we've had a limited exposure to their products. I've used, I own a couple of their paints. I use them, I use them all the time. Yeah, I, I actually like their yellows. So you know what? I'm going to... I dislike your GW yellows. So, so I've actually got some photos on my laptop uh, of an army that I painted from scratch. Uh, that I've actually got my surprise with. Yeah, I'll chuck them up there. Yeah. Um, so I've just put a link up to the... Uh, ITC Australia Events Facebook page, uh, who did a video of the OTP terrain and the sponsorship and whatnot. So if you're Fantastic. interested to see what that's all about, yep. uh, what they're providing, how cool it is, hit the link they just chucked in the stream, 
Uh, and I'm going to find my Deathwing that I sprayed and dipped. So I did, uh, I wouldn't say I did the same number of models uh, as uh, Nick Nanavati, but I did uh, five man squads of uh, Deathwing in 45 minutes from uh, basically base to, well, sprayed base to, to, to painted. So I'm going to put some of those pictures up. Beautiful. All right, we'll go back to the call of this game. Looks like we're some shooting. Those blood letters in the top uh, in the, in the um, bottom right have been significantly depleted. Looks like there's only four left out of the 20 that dropped down. So they'll most likely pop to morale if there only is that many left. Actually, uh, and the, the ones at the top, they've lost one, two, five, six. Looks like he's lost 13 or 14. There's about six left there. So they will pop to morale if he does not spend CP. The same for the blood at the bottom if they do not spend CP. Um, Looks like they're standing on Sorbet. Yeah, I'm not even sure if it's going to work. Yeah, we never tried this before. Give it a go. We didn't. <laughs> Did you kill our chat? Uh, Someone just left a comment. We don't know what it is. <laughs> the comments come back, mate. The comments will come we'll back. We'll just put that comment down and talk it back again. It was the gentleman we were asking about the uh, Iron Painter stuff. Please repost that. We didn't get to see it. Because Jeff was doing his fiddling. Doing his fiddling kind of things. Uh, all right, so he's just shot. He's probably done enough damage to account for his blood letter units. Yeah. Um, now the question is, how aggressive does he want to get with the looters? Uh, so there's this unit of plate bearers um, right in front of his lines. I'm um, most likely they cop both of the Megan Ops this turn. He's going to charge both of those in. So what is he going to do with the looters and the tank busters? That's the question. Yeah, look, strong turn is really highly regarded. With their dips, their dipping method is really, really, really highly regarded, and apparently it's, it's some of the best shading and and um, of that so products of that nature on the market. So definitely check those out if you're ever interested, guys. Now, where are we at with this? I gotta say, it's probably looters. Going there, old Daka Daka Daka. He's down to only one D6 worth of uh, command points left. So you'd have to assume he's been spending them. The paints work well, just have to shake them a bit. Uh, but the washes are the tops. Also, a well priced to boot. Yeah, the strong tone. There you go. Yep. Couldn't get also, it also I'd, I'd we should put that in the rolling text at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much. Good uh, so basically, I've just put some pictures of uh, my lion wing. So there were some uh, uh, raven wing uh, uh, riders uh, on high off lions as my uh, bikes, as well as uh, probably not the. Oh, that's a rubbish photo. Oh well. Rubbish there photo. Now. Uh, there's a couple of good photos up there of uh, of the of the models. Cheers, mate. All right. And back to the stream. Uh, so sorry, we are... uh, one of the TOs just walked past and said, yeah, can I take you rubbish? I pointed to the, the seven empty drink bottles I've consumed today. And he's just like, I'll come back. Good times. Speaking about that, let's top up another one for him. Um, looks like it almost in the charge time, but he has taken a few of these, um, a few of these plague bearers from the minus two to hit unit have been taken away. They have been removed. Um, I wonder what if that was the lose shooting. Maybe he just wants to cut down that unit before he goes in to guarantee he's going to do the damage. Thank you, brother. Gotta buy that guy a beer tonight. <laughs> uh, Alrighty. Right. We want to. So we're doing a little bit of a bits competition. So crack one, crack one of these open. So we got uh, we got some down on network dice to give away to the biggest cheerer. So the way you cheer, you convert regular money over, over to like theme park Twitch money, and then you throw it at us in uh, bits donations. So you can chuck in the cheer and put a comment. I think that's read out on the stream, or you can chuck in the cheer and give us a question and we will answer it. But the top cheerer for today is going to get ten of these bad boys to take home. Currently, yep. that is totally not panics in uh, one thousand and one. Bits contributions. When you do a uh, a bits uh, donation or whatever you want to call it, um, yes, if you type a message afterwards, the stream will automatically read it out for us, and you will hear it come through in, I believe, an Australian accent by a guy named Kev. I see. I think I should recall all my most ochre. I should recall every word in the English lexicon. It'd be like. Yeah, right, mate. That was a pretty, pretty good stream. You guys keep going. Yeah, good. That should be our voice. I don't think so. Well, you're wrong, firstly. Well, I'll... Secondly, 
Shut up. What do you? What, all right, all right. Uh, Thirty-two viewers. Uh, oh, we jumped to thirty-seven. We got. See, thanks. We so, jumped. We, we grabbed five new viewers from that uh, Ocker accent. Oh, bang! It just does it right. Um, the OTP code for that fifty percent off is scrolling across right now. Enter code OTP fifteen percent. Fifty percent off three D printed terrain. What's what, what's like a full table of terrain cost these days? From G Dub, it costs like a thousand bucks. Ah, easy. And OTP terrain will be cheaper than that, and you get fifteen percent off that. Yeah. So. Seems like a good deal to me, guys. Their crates are really sick as well. Yeah. We've given their crates away on here plenty of times. We have um, a couple of $25 uh, vouchers to give away from them as well, don't yes. we? Yes. Uh, one will be going to the Most Valuable Viewer uh, Award. So those who get involved in the, the stream chat and whatnot, whether that be uh, answering questions, whether that be asking questions, just yep. generally engaging speaking, content. engaging. Engage, making this around, more exciting. To, you know, taking the piss with us, taking yep. the piss out of us. We respect that highly. Um, so yeah, yes. contribute, jump in, get involved. You could win some nice stuff. On top of that, we have... So Totally Not Panics is from my hometown right now, Ballarat. He's running an event down there in April called RatCon. We've got that across the bottom. 6th and 7th of April, 2019. It's, it's right in the middle of the text bar, right freaking now. Um, we have two tickets to that event to give away. Naturally, it's in, it's in regional Victoria, Australia. Some people can or cannot make it there. Um, if, but we will give, be giving that away as one of the prizes on the stream as well. Yes. So we'll be, we'll be giving those prizes away at the end of the thing tomorrow. So tune in to game eight, and you'll be we'll be just prizes all away. Uh, Mega Dogs are with custom shoes. Uh, oh, McGowan joins the team. McGowan. Is that actually McGowan? It's just McGowan. You sure? Hundred percent. Beautiful. Uh, joins the pit race. The heat is on, but he's still trading not panics by a uh, fair bit. So it looks like the Mega Dogs. Looks like the Mega Dogs have lost a few guys, unless they're all trailed under. <laughs> we can touch your bits. That's hilarious. I, I find it hard to believe that those, those Mega Dogs are dead. He's still in the charge phase. So there must be must have got a big charge and he's trailed under the, the last side blocking terrain. Maybe he's, maybe he's even connected with the blood letters as well. Possibly. So there's a... Uh, well, we, we might wait and, uh, and see a little bit, but basically the, the blood letters might... The blood letters are here-ish um, uh, in the ruin. So there's a chance that we've actually got some... Um, uh, Mega Dogs uh, along here. Connected here goes with the, the charge. This big charge... The full reroll. Doesn't look like he's made it, guys. That was a cock dice. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's made that. That was a big charge for those Mega Dogs to make it into those Plague Bearers. Um, I think he, he, might have, he might have shot them too much because they were, like, it was like a three or four inch charge. But because yep. he shot them, um, Josh was able to take away the guys that were going to be in the, in the short range charge for him. So if he's going straight into combat, this will be the Mega Dogs uh, pounding and onto these Plague Bearers. Show me your pities. <laughs> Uh, it's against uh, the Twitch uh, it's rules. A great, it's a great saying. Yeah. Where's, where's Sinbad? You don't want these dice in there. He's there. He's right there. One sec. I'll mute you and then you can yell. Oi, Sinbad. Sinbad. Dane. Yeah. Fuck him. <laughs> Shh. Shots fired. I got Shots him in the butt fired. with his own dice. Chelsea went and picked <laughs> Chelsea it up. Chelsea went picked it up. The Very lovely Chelsea. Chelsea. I was just giving you your dice. What, we had one of your dice. I piffed it at you. It's his dice. <laughs> That's all right. It's ours now. <laughs> and now it's gone. I don't know what he's been drinking, seeing as how he doesn't drink. This guy. <laughs> I just got a random... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the power this of the community guy. This is I just, quality. So I pissed it the first time. Chelsea, who's a lovely person, went and got that dice and brought it back. I hit him in the butt with his own dice, but he didn't know what it was. He thought I was going to try to get his head. So he brought it back. I pissed it at him again. Miss hit another bloke. That bloke picked it up, turned to me, and I said, give it to Dean. He walked up and he gave it to Dean. That's a fantastic story. Can the, you tell another? The power of the community. I can. I can tell so many stories. All right. <laughs> Gather around, Listen children. Listen up, guys. There was this one time I ran triple Bane Blades, yeah? Oh, mate. What addition? I made triple Bane Blades at Masters. And in the second game of that event, I played against, was it five units of Zinch um, Alpha Legion Obliterators? Yeah. With the Changeling. So they're all negative two. And he had like four Demon Princes. I had a Hellhammer, yeah? Yeah. With all flamers on it. So I was like, ha, flamers. I rolled that puppy up, Vengeance for Kadia, picked up four units of a Blitz and a Charged, and let's see Peter hit on twos, 
and killed the Demon Prince as well. And that guy packed up his bottles and left the event. You're a horrible human being. <laughs> Dude, he ran five units of negative two to hit obliterators. Was that he has the, nothing to complain was that, about. Was that the Masters uh, last year? Last year. Yeah. That year I took uh, a grey art list with some guard and my first round opponent was Orcs. And I'm pretty sure he didn't play after that either. Oh, jeez. Uh, that was Val, horrible. Val, the heffy, heffy, heffelfinger has just joined us. Or Uncle Hefe, as I like to call him. I'm not sure if he likes that. It's too bad. He doesn't have a choice. How are you doing today, brother? What are you working on? How's your day going? How is your evening progressing? Boo. Boo to you too. Trigger warning. Ah, <laughs> oh, maybe he's delayed. He's just catching up with uh, my amazing story. Um, but it looks like those Mega Knobs haven't made a huge dent on the play players. Maybe should just see what they get for their morale if they stick around or whether he pays the CP. He's still got 3 CP left. <laughs> oh, Val's just been to a GT. Val, ah. Val, baby, tell us about your GT experience today. If you can, if, it's not too if there's not too much of a, a, uh, a hurtful experience. <laughs> True story. Good thing you didn't go to a real GT this weekend. Hey, bitch. This is a major. Thank you very much. Major. Tell uh, uh, me uh, fine, uh, brother. You went to a GT. We're streaming a major. <laughs> but yeah, how'd you go, man? Did you enjoy yourself? Uh, what have we got here? Ah, uh, yep. Yeah, uh, so I think those playgrounds just popped him around. Six no-shows. Does that mean you won? You won six games by not playing? <laughs> that seems like a good deal. Yeah. Or a bad deal, depending on how much you enjoy it. So we have... Ah, uh, sorry. We don't have that uh, bit, that widget set up. He's tried to do the, the thing that just posted the list to him. Ah. There's a widget. So we will read out those lists for you for your viewing pleasure. We're just going to give you a scores update. So Liam has slingshotted into the lead. He was one point down. He has gone into... Uh, wow, he's still putting the scores in now. Quite a commanding lead. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, he's saying that his GT had six no-shows. Okay. And uh, this bumped him down um, to the GT status. Dance monkeys. Uh. <laughs> Pete is a savage animal. He just said, I think Val lost to one of those no-shows based on his scores. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, okay. Um, we'll jump back into where we were at. Just got to give you a quick update on the scores. It is 13 to 9. So that means he scored five points this turn. Kill one, hold one. Yep. Uh, so basically, uh, Liam uh, is on uh, seven for primaries. Uh, and he's got two points for Mark for Death, four points for Reaper. Uh, still hasn't scored a headhunter point yet. Yep. Uh, whereas Josh, uh, which is the bottom, is just starting the bottom of turn four. Uh, he's on six primaries, uh, one for Reaper, two for Recon. <laughs> um, I'd like to point out the blood that you know, at the top rolled the one and got some guys back on the morale. Um, so that's actually significant. They're still there. And at the at the in the bottom right, he has moved in advance those plague bearers to try and get them uh, into some relevance. So I think what he's going to try and do is he needs to use the corn prince now. Mm -hmm. The Corn Prince needs to come out now. But what he needs to do is after he charges, he needs to be wrapped in Plague Bearers. Yep. So he's going to ch see where he's positioned these guys. They're actually already almost um, candy canning out already. So when they wrap, they can go into there. He can connect the Demon Prince there. And on the pilot, he can wrap them around. So he activates the Corn Prince first, kills out the, um, the Mega Knobs, and then wraps the Plague Bearers around him so he can't get shot. Because what he can't afford to do is now trade the Demon Prince for one of the Mega Knobs just, and lose them to the Tank Busters and the Looters. Yep. That's, a, that's, not a, that's not a trade you can do at this point in the game. No way. With how many models you've lost already. Okay, lists for our Canadian brethren. Starting off with Joshua Brody. We have a Chaos Demons Battalion. This one is uh, under fire. He has Bellicor. He has a Bloodmaster. He has a Demon Prince with wings and the Corn Axe of I Hate Knights. He has two 20-man Bloodletter Bombs and 22 uh, Plague Bearers. Then he has another battalion attached with this one's all Nurgle. He has one of each of the Nurgle Heralds, that being a Pox Springer, Sophie the Bile Piper, a Squirrel Pox Scrivener. Then he has uh, one, two, three units of 30 Plague Bearers and a Poo Tree. Yep. Over to Liam Hackett's very unique um, Orcs list. He has a Evil Sons Battalion. He has a War Boss, which is just a big chopper. Um, and he has a Weird Boy Basic as well. Three units of 10 Grots, two units of 10 Mega Knobs with custom shooters. 
So I'll say that again. Two units of 10 Meganars with custom shooters. Uh, then he has a battalion attachment of bad moves. He has a shock attack gun, uh, big mech, no shock attack gun, big mech, and a three grots. Uh, then he has tank busters again, uh, 15 of them, I believe, 15 tank busters. Then he has 15 looters, a detachment, a battalion of, of blood axes with another big mech with shock attack gun, another weird boy, and another 30 grots. So that's 90 grots, three shock attack guns, two weird boys, one mega, one mega knob, and 15 tank busters, 15 looters, 20 mega knobs. It is a fearsome list. Oh, yeah. See, look, he's committed both Bellacore and um, the Corn Prince. But I think he's overcommitted, yeah? If he puts both of those into the Megadob, if he trades both of those for the Megadobs, he has lost this game. Yeah, mate. They're the only, those are the only two things that are going to keep the Megadobs from sweeping through. Because they're the only things that can hurt a 2 plus save. Yeah. Yeah, Val. Uh, he, Liam is a very, very good, very, very lazy player. He refuses to play Horde, but he freaking loves Orcs. Thanks for last chance, 1987. Thank you very much for the follow, guys. Martino and Simon, uh, as, of, as of last when we saw it there, they were actually playing a little bit behind. They were still on the turn two. We're going to go do a run. Yeah, why not? Yeah, we'll go do a run. I've got to fire up Discord anyway, because these guys might jump in. Yeah, yeah. Would you um, we've got talent left in this round. I'll check that as well. Check that as well. We've got under an hour left though. So, and I will jump on the primary commentary. Because we all know I'm the primary commentator. Shazam! I'm boots on the ground. Yep, you are boots on the ground. You're actually dead set you are now. Alright, so I should be coming through loud and clear. Can Please. you hear me through the Please confirm the presence of Diffie as he goes a Roman, strolling through the fields of 40k love. Alright, so just to clarify, those Mega Knobs are two, four, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are eight Mega Knobs left in the eight bottom eight. right hand corner. Yep. They're under here. Yep. <laughs> Looks like there was only four left. <laughs> yeah, it looks like there's only four there from our point of view. There's eight under there. So he actually lost he actually lost two to the um, the plague yep. bearers. Wow, that's actually pretty well, wow, that's unlikely. Uh, the other Megan Knob squad is still uh, ten strong. Yep. Uh, so, and Bellacore just got into the Megan Knobs. Wow, so this is a quick turn. Um, yeah, quite a quick turn. So Bellacore's in there. He's got flat three damage and minus four on his attack. So he's only going to get a six up save. And every one that goes through is a dead Mega Knob. Those guys are going to get owned. The problem is, though, if he loses... If he just has tank buses and looters, which he's got directly above, directly above those two Demon Princes is tank buses and looters. And another unit of Mega Knobs. And they could he needs to guys and just rickroll the crap out of him. Okay. He what's... needs to kill the We've got people joining, I think. Sorry? Hold on. Um, so he needs to kill the Mega Knobs and then wrap his Prince and Bellacore with the Plague Bearers. He dead set needs to. That's the only way he keeps them alive. Even then, it's not a, it's not 100% because he can still charge those Mega Knobs into them. All right, we're going to Eric Lathurus. Uh, technically, this is our top table. This is yep. Kirby from 3++ as plus plus, a new black. Um, and Eric Lathurus playing Nids versus, Nids versus Tau. And you would think the Nids would be absolutely getting boned. Tell us a different story, Diffie. All right, so we walked over to have a quick look at the score sheet. Look up at Will, and Will says, not going any better, Diffie. Um, so uh, Kirby didn't kill a unit until turn three. Wow. Um, and uh, Eric has killed one, killed more every turn so far. Looks like it's bottom of turn three right now. Wow. Kirby wants a hug. Kirby wants a hug. All right, come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. <laughs> come here, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Kirby's going down to Lathurus, it looks like, unless, yeah, unless something in that game dramatically changes. Over to yeah. the game you boys have been asking for. This is uh, Simon Gorkovic. Marigold. The big old Grotz versus Jeremy Marigold Martino. Okay, so... Looks like it's pretty... Oh, looks like it's uh, heavily into Jeremy's favour at the moment. But uh, still a little early to make that call. Um, Jeremy has... 
uh, been quite strong on the points so far. So first you only got three points, second you only got four, to two points to two points. So at the moment we are, if I can do my math, uh, he's seven uh, primary points to four. Uh, and Simon is yet to reach, uh, get a secondary, but, uh, and while well, Jeremy is like streaming ahead on the secondary, so it's, uh, looks like it's still early on, maybe turn two, maybe turn three, um, and, uh, scores are pretty heavy into Jeremy's favour at the moment. What's left on the clock for both of them, mate? Because they're both talking each other. Uh, 20 minutes for Jez, 33 for Simon. So is that, tw sorry, did you say 20 minutes for Jeremy? Yep. Okay, wow, okay, yep. So he's running out of time quickly. Yep. All right, mate. Um, check uh, what's, the wall duck, yep. I guess. Yep, wall duck's next in line. Who's wall duck playing uh, against? What's, his, what's the other gentleman's name? I keep saying check on wall duck. I want to know the other guy's name too. Uh, 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 he is playing against Jason Miller. Yep. Yep. Uh, so we've got the, the, horde is, the horde is still there. Um... There's two, so there's a Riptide, uh, so two Riptides, I think, they're all jumping around, they could be Yvaras Uva or whatever they're called, a little hard to tell, a little converted, look nice, um, but uh, yes, uh, Warduck has uh, a fair bit of uh, dominance uh, on the score sheet, I'm not sure how many turns they've got in so far. But yep. uh, he's looking pretty good. Fair enough. Uh, one last check no, in I'll on Ben Mulhall. Our yeah, we'll see. Patreon supporters. All round top bloke. First time at a major event. Actually, first time at an event of any kind. And he has made it to round five uh, undefeated at his very first tournament. So tell us how he's doing, mate. Uh, I'll, I'll just check. Are you pulling it back? Oh. <laughs> I can see his, I can I see his dejected know. head already. I don't the know. Uh, is it the... Yeah, he said the points actually look uh, not too bad right now, but uh, everything's pretty much dead. So uh, uh, potentially the next couple of turns uh, could could really start swinging that. Bugger. Fair enough, mate. Well, come back, check on our stream game, and come back and tell us what's going on. So back, check it back in the stream game. Judge. I can see. Judge. Uh, are they into the combat phase yet? And what's the? They're having a bit of a dispute. They got the judge involved. Yep. So right now there is uh, three mega knobs left. Yep. All right, so they're, they're just discussing, I think, the Corn Prince. Are they discussing that the Corn Prince can't make combat? I believe so. Yeah, I, 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 from what I'm saying right now, I don't think the Corn Prince can make combat. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's, that's a, um, a, a big deal. He couldn't have made, I don't think he could have declared the charge. Well, he couldn't have connected when he made the charge. He couldn't have ended within one inch. Did he, did I think, it? was he trying to use, he his, was he trying to use his wings? An attack from his wings or something? Uh, I'm not sure if he's trying to attack with his wings, but uh, he didn't make the combat. Okay, cool. Yeah. So there's still he's three mega four inches left. away. He's four inches away, uh, and so I couldn't him. No, fair call. All right, come on back, brother. I'm coming back. That looks like um, that's pretty unfortunate. He's charged these plague bears in. So he, what did he roll on his charge? He didn't roll enough to make it. I believe he made the charge. Um, I think when it came to piling in. So all right. So basically, what uh, here's here's the situation. You have to pile into the closest model. Yeah, yeah. All right. The closest model. He couldn't go through the wall. Yeah, and he and can't so, go around Bellacore. Uh, he closest. couldn't. And he couldn't. So this guy here was the closest model, but he yeah. couldn't get within an inch. Yeah, because he's a monster. Right. He can't go into the building. Yep. All right, um, and so uh, that was four inches around. So basically, he just couldn't get in there. So he's just placed Bellacore incorrectly. Yep. 100% he should have placed Bellacore up up, and left the space for the, the Imprint to slide in. That's actually big. That should be a dead unit of the Meganobs. 100% should be dead. Um, now he's got three left, and he has a decent... He has a, a medium... Actually, no, he's probably not going to kill Bellacore, though. Bellacore's got a three plus vulnerable save. But this is a turn... Like, he's, he's not going to get a kill. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, sorry. I gave you one from this round. We got separate. Fantastic. Good job. Um, yeah, but the yeah. problem is, if he wants to, 
So he declares the charge and he needs to end, the, he needs to end his charge within an inch of a model. Yeah. And he, he couldn't do that, so. So he'd already made his charge move, yeah? Yep. And he finished his charge move there. But he wasn't within an inch of a model. So he technically uh, could not have declared the charge. Well, no, no, sorry, no, no, he didn't complete so, the charge. No, so there was, um, so uh, potentially, there, I believe there was a model here. Oh, hold on. Oh, which he's removed. He's removed as a casualty. That's a casualty from Bellacourt. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, punch, that makes a lot more, that makes a lot more sense. Punch through the sense. wall. Yeah. Punch through the wall. Yeah. Well, let's, let's just try for removal by Liam's part. Yep. Um, yeah, interesting. So now this will be Megadoth attacking back. Yep. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, so that's um, Jim Vassal. He should definitely, well, Bellacore was positioned incorrectly. Uh, yep. Bellashaw could should have piled up above or um, below and let the, let the Dam Prince go above again. Well, the Dam Prince just should have hit first. Yeah, ex oh, exactly right. Well, the Dam Prince just attacks first and then it's a, it's a non issue. Yep. If the Dam Prince attacks first, then yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. He's killing some. He's just taking away some um, some grots, and then those mega dogs are going to clean most of what's up there uh, between shooting the shock attack guns and then fighting um, with both the mega dogs. I think I think Brody's absolutely on the back foot now. Yeah. But this is good. He's, he's only on the back foot, bottom of turn four. Yep. Rather than the top of turn one. Oh, so, the game isn't over no, by God, any God, stretch no. of imagination. I, I said back foot. No. I didn't yep. say over. So, but look. He has no chance to wrap around his Demon Princess now. He's got a unit of 15 looters, a unit of 15 tank busters, primed, scoping, dead set, staring down the barrel of Bellacore and the Corn Demon Prince. I figure they both drop this turn. Most of that Plague Bear unit at the top drops this turn. The Corn, the, uh, the Bloodless at the top drop this, drop this turn. Yep. And there's no, there's no way he's coming back from that. Now, depending on, so, uh, what we're seeing here... Uh, we've got uh, Grotz. Grotz there, yep. There. He needs, to, he needs to keep this Grot where it is. No yeah, matter what, so he right cannot now, remove this Grot. Right now, this guy is not engaged. Yeah. Okay? Um, so, uh, the closest model between him and the looters and tank busters is Bellacor, yeah. another character. Yep. Um, if he keeps the... Um, well, absolutely the looters. The tank busters wraps. might be... The plague bears up here. Oh, uh, true. Sorry, you need to. They'll need to come down a bit. Yeah, they'll need. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but he should be able to take out that demon prince. I think with change. Well, to be honest, I think he moves the um, the tank busters down, shoots into one of them, and if he can make a charge into those plague bears, chuck him into the plague bears. The tank still busters are the. Oh yeah, yeah. Tank busters, still tank busters into the into the demon, shooting into the demon princess with the bomb squeaks, which hit on twos, because uh, he's got he's got freaking six bomb squeaks he hasn't used. All right, here we go. Here comes the war boss. Yeah. He's only got a big chopper, though. Yeah, if you send that big chopper uh, war boss into plate bearers, that's oh, yeah, all right. For, oh, for sure, yeah, into plate bearers. That's all right. Absolutely right. <laughs> all right. Can't shoot fly with squeaks. Oh, can't shoot fly and can't shoot units with fly with squeaks. Is that true? There you go. Oh, we were talking about bomb squigging the uh, plague bearers, but uh, no, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. You've got bomb squigging the um, yeah, bomb squigging the team of princes would have been amazing. I didn't know you couldn't hit them on fly. There you go, yep. Val. You're learning me some things. Good on you, mate. I could have told you that. You, well, you did it, Val. Did. Well, you didn't tell me anything, Josh. It wasn't Val relevant. Told me. It wasn't relevant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so he's falling back with some of the East fell back With the Grotz. And the Meganops. Well, he should, of course he should fall back with yep. the Meganops. So he's going to uh, now move those uh, looters up as we expected and... Uh, Make sure they're the closest. Well, he, more Daka. He's still got... Well, I don't know how many CP he's got. So they circle the yellow dice for yep. us. And circle so, these for us as well. The... So Josh Brody is using one dice per CP, so yeah. we know he's got two left. Whereas, um, I guess Liam would have had to have used 18 dice yeah. to represent how many he's got, so he's been using D6s. So we don't know how many CP he's got left. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we've got some precise measuring going out here. He's trying to get the, um, he's just trying to get the tank buses closer than the plague bearers. 
sorry, closer to the Demon Princes and the Plague Bearers. Um, we got one of the TOs checking how many CP he's got. It's actually a big call. Uh, Four. Four. Beautiful. So he's got enough more Dark Ring shooting. Yep. Um, in my first tournament game of eight, I looked down a Storm Raven with Bob Squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they were just throwing it at him. They were just fucking... Um, were they riding the back of Storm, Storm Boys? Boys? Yeah. Uh, so, with three shots, more darker and shoot again, he just kills both Demon Princes with just the looters, yeah? <laughs> There's 15 looters, 45 shots. He just kills them both, right? Um, that could, that's utter savagery. If he can save the Tank Busters for Plague Bearers, save the Mega Nobs for Plague Bearers, yeah, I think this is this is a stomping. They had hops. <laughs> Indeed they did. Beautiful, thanks brother. A couple more scores are coming in. Any big names? Uh, Dan Martin. Dan the belligerent Martin. Oh, jeez. That was a tight game. That's one point loss against Timmy Morton. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Dan's playing Knights. Don't know what Timothy was playing, but that looks like it was a very close game. 19 to 20. So, we have a number of uh, the lads that are meant to be joining us at some stage in the chat. I think they're enjoying just taking the piss out of each other. Uh, you are, we are more than welcome to just stay in the chat, but if you want to jump on Discord, you are also more well, than welcome. Well, how long have we got left in this round? Oh, actually, that's a very good point. Yeah. 40 minutes. 40 minutes? Yeah. Shit, boys, jump you on. want to jump on for half Peter, Val, Sean, if you're in there, uh, Pablo, if you're in there, jump on Discord. We'll talk some smack. Uh, I think we've got Megan, yeah, Megan up to shooting. So Megan Ovs, they'll put a few of the Megan Ovs into the... So in the blood letters. Uh, we're going to see, these blood letters will just die. They're just dead. Yeah, they'll just will take them off. Yeah. Uh, then the Megan Ovs are going to charge this Plague Bearer unit. And that's all she wrote. They'll <laughs> uh, get in here. I still have about 600 lists to get through. Let them know how pretty I am. He's a, <laughs> he's a lovely man, Peter. You are a lovely, actually legitimately lovely man. Those th those things that the rest of the chapter type of guys say about you, it's all not, lies. They're not true, man. All they're lies. so not true. The things they say about you behind your back, yeah, we they're disagree, horrible. guys. Yeah. What they say about me behind my back, all truth. You, none. <laughs> yes. No, I, I can't do that one. Never mind. Family, Adam. Family-focused content. Uh, big thanks to the... Bellacore. Bang, bang, bang. Down. That must have been looters. Yeah. Big thanks to uh, FLG for hosting us. Yes. Uh, along with BiffPod. Along with BiffPod. Along with uh, Glasshammer if they ever wake Glasshammer up. Gaming if they're long slumber. St streaming us. Have you jumped, have you jumped on them and... and oh, I should, I should send ass? them a message. Let's, uh, let's just check their... Uh... Bloody palms, you know. They say they're going to do stuff and then they sleep and then they wake up and they don't do it. Yes, that's exactly, that's exactly how it works. That's exactly how it works, man. Can Hammer, yeah, yeah. See, Can Hammer, they said they were going to do it. But they thought they were going to be hosting another stream for us. So they were like ready to do a whole menagerie of things that we didn't need them to do. We just wanted to host this. Uh, but they'd already committed to hosting the Honest Wargamer. Jeez. Our lunch was cut. There's another lovely man, by the way. Honest Wargamer, if you into AOS, he does, he does a lot of AOS coverage. That's a little bit of 40k. But um, check him out if you want. He's, he's a lovely, lovely man as well. Just going to plug our major sponsors for a sec. Go for it. Um, so we're sponsored by two organizations here today. OTP Terrain, who has sponsored us through our very, very, from our very, very, very first stream. We were streaming an event from the seat of our pants. We went around for a walk at lunchtime, started a conversation, got a sponsor. It was awesome. And they've been sponsoring us ever since. They have a 15% off all their 3D printed terrains, which vary from 8mm to 32mm, uh, and all the way in between. So everything from Warmer Horse Infinity to 40K to Titanicus, whatever you want. Um, they've got a 15% off sale happening right now. The code will be in our, um, our scrolling text along the bottom, but it's, it's easy. It's OTP 15%. You'll get 15% off your order. Jump on it, guys. Fantastic bargain. It's from now until the uh, start of fe until February 1st. Our other major sponsor is right on the screen right now, Army Painter. Fantastic organization run by hobbyists for hobbyists. And Did you say the wrong at millimeters again? 6 mil to 32. I keep saying 8. Ugh. Anyway, uh, Army Painter, run by hobbyists for hobbyists. I got you back, Emma. We started to make painting a not intimidating chore to make it easy 
But is it easy to when you pick up your models, you go, hey, I can get these on the tables quickly, and they're not going to look crap. They're going to look good. They're not going to, they're not going to blow anyone's buyers. They're not crystal brush winners or, or golden demons. But yeah. they're a very respectable baseline, and it, it achieved very quickly and very easily. You don't need to be a stupidly crazy good artist. Anybody can pick up their paints and get great results. Jump on it, amazing organization. Adam Abramowitz has been hitting us up. We've been chatting with him. He's a magnificent human being. Plug the, um, the Best General Podcast, which is about to start up soon again for the second season. Jump on that. Listen to it anytime it's come out. On the say it is. Mag- amazing, man. Poster with some stuff on it. Scrolling banner. Did that work? Did that work? Yeah. That was, yeah. Budget. <laughs> Budget scrolling banner. <laughs> okay. Back to calling of this game. So, Bellicor's dropped. Looks like some Plague Bearers in the bottom unit have been dropped. He's picking up some more now. Um, probably shooting yeah. from the Mega Knobs, I would assume. Uh, it's not... Unless it's Tank Busters. It's three Mega Knobs. Three Mega Knobs ain't killing that many Plague Bearers. That's true. Um, could be the Tank Busters. Could be the Tank Busters. the Bomb Spruce from the Tank Busters and the Rockets are going to go into the Demon Prince. Could, yeah, could have been the Looters shooting again. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was seeing if the Blood is still there. We have to assume those Mega Knobs have been shot. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I, uh, I reckon those Looters are probably closer to the... Plague bearers than they are. No, he mentioned it. He mentioned it. Um, but, well, sorry, yeah, they were closer to Bellacore than the no, plague no, no, bearers. No, but, no, sorry, but then to, now to, they are. to yeah. the bloodthirster. Yeah, yeah. They were closer to Bellacore before. He measured that. I saw him. But yeah, now they're not. So he's probably used them on the second round to take out the. Um... Yeah. Oh, he's also he's actually no, he's, he's got two command points left. He hasn't spared it. He hasn't shot twice. He's just got more Daka. Yeah. Now he's down to one. One left. Jim what? saw which LVO was true eight rounds. Look, honestly, I kind of do too. It makes for a, a huge, a huge, huge, huge amount of variance. And all the top players have to survive playing all the top players. Yeah. Literally. It's no, no simple elimination rockout. If you're in the top, like, 20, uh, 10 to 15% of that round, in those last four rounds, you have to play every other big dog player and get through them to make the finals. Just chuck it down. Uh, response to Total Panics, when are the ANZ Masters invites going out? They're already out, they've all already been accepted, they're done. Uh, you can still play in the ANZ 40k Open, uh, and uh, for those who are unfamiliar with the ANZ Masters format, uh, it's a little different. So we have a 16 player uh, event uh, alongside or part of a uh, larger event. So basically, round one. Uh, all the ANZ Masters players play each other, yep. and all the losers are kicked out of the Masters <laughs> and jump into round two of the Open with their scores to date. Round three, sorry, round two of the uh, eight remaining four winners. Those winners go through to round three of Masters. The four losers go into round th- three of the Open, and yeah. so on. It's a very so round structured four, event. you've got the top two ANZ Masters players fighting out for ANZ Master. Uh, and then round five of the event is the highest ranked ANZ 40k open player against the champion, the, the, cha- the ANZ 40k master. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, it's going to be pretty massive. Just for the lols. Uh, apparently, Val's jumped into Discord with Pete. Maybe we get those boys in. We've still got about half an hour left of this round. Let's get ah, some chin well, wagon going down. I don't see Pete, but I do see, see Val. So let's... Uh, All right, you want to chuck, uh, keep your headset on and just uh, chuck one of those in. Hello, can you hear me? All right. Can Val hear you? Can you hear me, guys? In Discord? Hello, gentlemen. How you doing? Oh, hi. This is this is this is a, this is a disorienting uh, experience so far. It is quite it wacky. Is quite wacky isn't it? It's, 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 it's brand new. No, no, this is, I, I don't think it's ever been done before, before on any stream, stream, stream I've ever seen. seen. So, so yeah, yeah it's disorienting. It's disorienting. Long, long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in theory, right now, uh, you should still be able to hear myself. Uh, can you just do a quick little uh, chat there, Adam, for a second to make sure you're coming through okay? Quick little chat for a second. Hey, buddy, buddy, can you hear me? Adam's getting well, a bit of an echo. Hear, I can hear both of you. Okay. Awesome. All right, well, let's, uh, let's see how this goes. All right, so welcome, welcome, Mr. Mr. Val. Adam says absolutely horrible things. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I think he has a man crush. I mean, if we're, if we're being honest about what's going on here. <laughs> well, that's you know. I mean, it's 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 uh, it's mutual. 
<laughs> you guys, you guys are wearing tanks out there. You got the guns out. I mean, yeah. Sun's out. I don't know if the internet's ready for this. <laughs> I mean, the, there was a mature content warning uh, after I joined the stream. I noticed. Yes. Uh, it's mainly because of the language. Uh, although, because oh, of well, that's the, what you think. <laughs> the because of the uh, hosts, our, our various Twitch hosts that have uh, have have shown well basically i'm just going to keep saying the word host i uh, have hosted us on their twitch channels uh, a lot of them don't use the same uh liberal use of uh the english language explosive yeah uh, and so we decided uh we don't we wouldn't mind getting hosted again at some stage <laughs> uh, just well, good. I'm, glad, I'm glad you guys are getting lots of support back to the game back to the game for a second the blood letters at the top have been removed and uh the plague bearers at the bottom have been removed Val, what do you think? You're watching your orc boys trundle along, what are your thoughts? On um, this particular game? That is yeah, go for this game. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm keen to see the uh, the Chaos Army continue to evaporate. <laughs> uh, that's nice. It's very likely. Uh, so. There seems to be a lot of green stuff on the board and a lot less Chaos stuff. Well, it's you know, literally the only thing, the only units the all, all player has lost is Grotz. Yeah. He's not lost anything except Grotz. He's probably lost less than 300 points worth of his army. Yeah, so he's lost uh, four Megadobs, uh, sorry, six Megadobs from uh, the bottom unit, uh, and I believe none from the top unit. Yeah, looks looks fresh. They still yep. have five units of Grotz. Yeah. Uh, so the looters and tank busters have just, you know, gone untouched. All the characters are still alive. Uh, yeah, all that's really gone are Grotz. And of those, he had starting nine, nine units of ten. And he's, he's lost got, 40. Yeah, and he's, yeah, so he's barely even got two Reaper points. Yeah. Like, I mean, he probably has, he's got two Reaper points, but only, only just. He's charged the Tank Busters into the Demon Prince. And I'm guessing the Mega Dogs are about to follow suit. All right. Now it's a wise choice because of the big, the big bases on the Megadobs. They take up a lot more space than the. Actually, wait, is he? No. Wow. Those looters aren't getting in there. No, the, sorry, the, the Megadobs. So, are not so the Megadobs. The just... Megadobs fell back. So. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just just yeah. Absolutely right, man. Good catch. Yes. Make sure to keep you on the tr on, on the straight and narrow. Jeez. It's few and far between, guys. How many? How many? So. I don't see a dice on that Corn Demon Prince. I believe he's unwounded. Unwounded, yeah. Uh, you know, with what is it, 15, 15. tank busters? Yeah. You know, what what sort of damage are we expecting from 15 tank busters against the Corn Prince? Probably not a tremendous amount. Yeah, but look, yeah. what what it's doing is not he's not going to lose all those tank busters. No. Yeah. And anyway, he has a, he has the war boss there within six for breaking heads. Yep. And then that Corn Prince doesn't get to charge Megadobs. Yep. Or no, for sure. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Could you could you have done the same thing? Uh, could, no, you need a biggest you need a big squad. Yeah. Um, now the war boss, uh, so it's actually he's lost more Megadobs than originally I thought. He hasn't lost yeah, six, he's lost seven. He's lost seven. So cause that there is not a Megadob, it's a war boss. So he is in range of the uh, tank busters to make sure they don't run away. Yeah. So if he loses a whole bunch, he can punch them in the head. Hang around. He's, he's only going to lose up to six. But look, no, agreed. But I'm just saying, re even if even if things go really pear shaped, uh, you know, he's not going to. They're, they're going to be there. Yeah. I hear we've got our wounds coming through. That looks. That that's looks pretty healthy. That looks very healthy. Uh, <laughs> this 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 can't be the no. tank busters. That has to be the Megan Hobbs. No, no, this, that is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. There's no for way sure. tank busters did that many wounds. No way. <laughs> All right. And now we got D3s to come. Yeah, yeah, it's the Megadops. They're D3s. Yeah. Um, I was like, there's no freaking way as tank busters. Uh, how many do you reckon die? I'm going to go six. I reckon, yeah, probably. It's brutal. Absolutely brutal. The thing is, they don't carry over, so you got to roll them in all kinds of weird and wonderful yeah. ways. Yeah, you got to make do all wacky shit. Um, Pete, how are you doing with the LVO list? And how many have you seen that are completely stuffed? So Pete's on the chat, but not on the Discord. Bugger. Wow. <laughs> Same question. Your much worse response. Are you sober? Or Val? Or Val now. Yeah. 
<laughs> painfully sober. Painfully sober. Exhausted. We, um, we, uh, we had some uh, scheduling difficulties our Monday, uh, the Trappist Tactics Sunday, for uh, recording an episode. I believe there was a sports team uh, that, that did reasonably well, and Val may have been a little excited. Would that be a fair statement, Val? I, th- I think it was the opposite. I think his team lost, and he was oh, really? pissed off. Yeah. Tell a us sports the story, team that had, that, that had done reasonably well. I'm not oh. picking up what you're, what, you're, what, you're, what you're putting down here. What, the Patriots? <laughs> Yeah, he didn't want the Patriots to win. Oh, oh okay. no, I got another What I'm saying is he was I'm, tanked. All right, that's really the, the, where I was going with this. Uh, um, I wasn't paying too much attention to which, which, which game it was uh, at the time. I was too busy going, well, I guess I'll have to go back to work. The short, the short, the short and long of it, Val got pissed and couldn't do the podcast. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. Yes, 100%. Well, I was just watching football. That was just that was just getting drunk. But you know, we only have there's only room for four on on chapter tactics. But Pablo does not have recording technology that allows for more than four. Uh, yes. Hosts. Yes. But so, uh, this is this is not reached Southern California yet. <laughs> it's, just, it's not it's not possible. Uh, the court Dean Prince has attacked, and I believe he took away the full six uh, tank busters. So uh, Pete says I'm about fifty lists in of the six hundred and fifty. About 250, though, have issues. But nothing we can't, you know, slap <laughs> through. Well, who would have thought that such a thing might happen when you have people manually submit lists? Ah, uh, <laughs> look, I, it's, it's, I don't know why we don't have, I don't know, some kind of army list builder. <laughs> you know, that might write army lists uh, that we could then potentially just copy and paste. I, I don't know. Uh, like, a, like a dedicated like, scribe of, of, yeah. of battle. Yes, yes. To yes. encourage our battles. <laughs> yes. And scribe the, scribe the army's force before the battles. Yeah. I'm, I uh, wish something like that existed. I wish something Pre- like perhaps that existed. It has, perhaps it has something to do with the flagrant conflict of interest. I'm, I'm probably going to say that. Perhaps the, probably uh, an organization is widespread and uh, affluent as James, James Workshop could purchase said organization or standardize maybe maybe they should just write one themselves <laughs> or buy or buy the scribe of battle that might be wandering around right now who knows lots of solutions guys look i yeah who knows who knows but uh it's so what talk. are the what are the green lumps at the top of the screen uh, were, were those yeah, plague, plague bears uh, the green dots no, no, i know that sorry yeah next to the big the big unit mega knobs that just got eaten yeah, so basically we've got uh, Plague Bearers here. Uh, these, basically there's pretty much Plague Bearers and a couple of Heralds left. And a Pootry. And a Pootry. Hey, right, put a smiley face. Smiley face. Yes! This is good. One thing that impressed me today, um, if, if you're against a, um, a shooting list at all, is how fast Grots will evaporate. Yeah. Yeah. Like in this, like against a list like this, they're going to be very annoying. But um, and and just like blocking a lot of space. But you know, if they if there's like significant shooting, um, they just they just turn into a fine mist. Um, I think we're going straight into. Uh, the, we're in the top of turn five. No, of turn five. Bottom of turn five. Now they haven't. Had, uh, I think we got straight into the combat phase because that was the demon prince. Well, they didn't have much else to do. Yeah, it's true. Like there was, yeah, literally, yeah. So, uh, the top, so the top six, basically, we've got. Uh, let's uh, bring this up here. We've got a Bloodmaster and a Corn Demon Prince uh, in the lines. Uh, we've got what the remaining of what two, four, six Plague Bearers uh, in what was originally a thirty-man squad. We have pretty much an untouched thirty-man. Um, ten man. Sorry, ten man. Would you would you simply go with? The, we've got a three-man here. Yeah, mo- oh, he's, he doesn't have enough left to mob up, does he? No, he doesn't. No, he's got, he's got one CP left. Uh, damn it. He doesn't need to mob up at this point. No, he doesn't, but uh, it would have been good. Yeah. Because it but means means you can stretch further. Well, so look at it like this. He, only, so he's got that Bloodmaster, which will get eaten by the Warboss and the Meganobs. Yep. And the Demon Prince is just going to get shot to death by Lunas. Yeah. If this... The top Meganob is going to go with that six man, probably get onto that objective. And all he's going to have left is a Pootry and three, ca- three Heralds on a yep. back objective. And that'll be... 
the end of the end of the game. Yep. So he's just made sure he's in range of uh, of the war boss, so as he can charge after advancing. Yeah. Uh, so he's uh, advanced as Megan Ob's, uh down the screen. Bit of a conga line. So he, he's going for the he's going for the damn priest. I would have thought he needed to with the looters. What, what I think he'll do, he'll he'll sh he's, he's putting him redundancy in. He's, he'll shoot the looters at the corn demon prince. Pro probably kill it. Probably. Keep in mind that evil sons also can um, shoot at full blitz skill after advancing. So oh, yeah, they've yeah. got assault weapons. So they could quite comfortably they'll shoot the looters at the corn demon prince. Probably kill it. But if they don't, then they've got. Uh, probably I'm going to say up to about here-ish, at a guess. Maybe even the whole unit might be in range. Hard to tell exactly. But you throw a, custom, a few custom shooters in there um, and, you know, do a few more do, do a few more wounds. So we just had Mr. McGowan point out that Josh has played this very well. And look, he has played this well. Yep. I, I honestly, it was a horrible matchup for Josh. Yeah, a horrible matchup. Huh. To get through 90 rights I mean, who would have thought that Orcs were yeah. good? Who would have yeah, well, thought... Yeah, and who would have thought... <laughs> An orc shooting army would trounce an army with no shooting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, by the way, this isn't a trouncing. It's 19 to 5. There's 19 to 15. 19 to 15. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a four points. Yep. This is, not but a this, this is actually a, very, it's a relatively close game. But what we're going to see here is this turn uh, Liam's going to get kill one, kill more, hold one, hold more. Is he, oh, get he might more? not even get hold more. That's what I mean. That's why I thought he, he needs, to get those oh, no, plague he needs, bearers. But he still is going to hit those plague bearers. But like, he's not going to get any objectives. He's, he's going to kill them. You can You look yeah. at how many mega knobs there are there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're absolutely right. Yeah, <laughs> he just kills it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just, they just die. I forgot. <laughs> They're, They're mega knobs. <laughs> they also shoot. Like he could legitimately just shoot those uh, what five plague bearers with the mega knobs. Or in a three shock attack guns. Yeah. So the looters, looters can't see him, but you know. He's got like, plenty. Three shock attack guns is an excessive amount of shock attack guns. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, we, the, we, we have forgotten the fact that there are three shock attack guns right here that uh, have line of sight on those uh, five plague bearers. They haven't moved since deployment. Oh, they don't need to. They don't need to. I imagine that Demon Prince is in, in, in view as well, because the looters just moved, right? Uh, uh, the looters, looters haven't, haven't moved. moved, no. No, the looters still. Oh, that's still. the looters. So the looters are here. What's next? What's uh, what's sort of in the middle on the right side? Here? Yeah. Next to the forest, just above the forest. This guy? That's a weird boy? That's a weird boy. That's Meganobs? That's Meganobs. That's a war boss. We've got Grotz. Grotz. Yeah. Grotz. Grotz. Another, another weird boy. And another weird boy. So oh, I, right probably should, I probably could have done weird boy, weird boy, Grotz. Isn't that fantastic? Stupendous. Um, yeah. That's quality work there. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> it's a mega knob in its own right. <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, That's what we all aspire to be. We haven't drawn one phallic symbol on the screen <laughs> this whole weekend. Uh, and I think it's the first time we've ever done it. Dude, we have, like done a, it. we have like a quota. Twitch doesn't just... Uh, the, the algorithm just doesn't automatically figure out that you... you, you, you you drew a dick on the screen and they just shut you down? No, no. the only, the only so reason we haven't done it uh, t today, or yesterday, uh, is because, who's, uh, because of all the different people that are hosting us. And we just don't want to alienate too many, uh, too many people from uh, outside of Oz. That's fair. Looks like we're going to have six Megadobs and a war boss into that Demon Prince. I think that's plenty, especially yeah. if they get a war pass. If they get a uh, war pass, there's, there's nothing. Also, there's absolutely... Uh, the. Uh, Demon player has no CP left. Uh, yeah. And there's one left for the off player. So basically what's going to happen, he'll fight with... Uh, it's gone. gone. Yeah. He would have fought with the, these guys first. So yeah, and now he passes uh, this way. And uh, these guys, once again, they just would have been there for redundancy. Yeah. And so he's going to get five? Four? Uh, look, I reckon he's five. Yeah, I reckon he's probably five. Within an inch of an inch. Yeah. Um, but to be honest, I reckon... If, if you can't kill five Plague Bearers with four, um, <laughs> Look, I don't they've, know. Legitimate, they've legitimately probably got a Warpath on them as well. Uh, they could. Uh, they What's the range of Warpath? 18, I believe. Or is it 12, Val? Yeah. If, if it's 18... So Warpath's 18. Yeah, 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 yeah so well. they would have been in range. For sure. Yeah, look at... Nah, these... These cactus. These absolutely... 
That's the D3s. He's only got six guys there. Woo! <laughs> That's probably the more got already. He's trying, he's trying. <laughs> nah, that's it. Nah, that's <laughs> all she wrote. <laughs> so he has he has a poo tree and four her three hells left. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Kill one, kill more, hold one, hold more. Um, That'll be his last bar for death. Oh, and also, uh, Leon still has... Was that... That was top of the turn. That was, that was, was his turn six. Yeah. yeah, they haven't updated that, but that, yeah, that was the top of turn six. Yeah. That was the last turn. And now at the bottom of the turn oh, where he has three uh, holds. Yeah, so basically it's just a uh, shake hands at this point, right? Yeah, sure. I'm not sure there's anything you can do to get a point here. Uh, I don't think there's a single... No, there's no... There's, you can make sure... You can make sure you are in range. Uh, so if they, he probably already is in range, but this guy can just go here, he is. He is get hold range. one. Thank you. See you later. Yeah, that's, that's it. It's, yeah, it's cactus. As he's, far up, as he's, he's just made a big jump. He's up to 25 points to 16. Yeah, it's so basically uh, we've got, he got four points for Mark for Death, four points for the Reaper, and three points for Headhunter. They've just shaked hands. Uh, and uh, Liam got three points for Reaper, three points for Recon. Uh, and so that's uh, 25 to 17. Uh, and they got six turns in. Fantastic. That's amazing. Yeah. That feels pretty low scoring for uh, for six guys too. Yeah, it does. It actually, legitimately. The, all right. So the, the very first turn, they both just got hold one. The second turn, uh, uh, the demon player just got hold one, and Liam just got hold one and hold more. Basically, uh, I'm not sure how much of the game you watch, Val, but the the demon player had two blood letter bombs, and so mm -hmm. uh, Liam held back his mega knobs until after they had dropped, and so. so Standing off like Kirk versus Spock. That's yeah. correct. Yep. So it wasn't until uh, turn three when he when uh, Josh dropped the blood letters uh, and got uh, four points that turn, and then Josh didn't get too many points thereafter. Yeah. Um, so Liam, Josh, had, Liam. Josh had a really good turn three, uh, but then Liam Liam just played the the long the long game, uh, and and just yeah got it done. Well, see, the thing is, with the Mega Knobs, he can't commit too early. If he commits too early, the Demon Prince and, and Bellacore eat a whole unit, and the two units of Blood Letters eat the other unit. And he's left mm -hmm. with maybe maybe two or three left at the, when the dust clears from, in, out of one turn. Yep. And he can no longer contest the board. He, he's going to lose the board to the, to the Plague Bearers, and he's just going to get trounced. So he played, the, he, he, did, he played the long game. He did not come anywhere near it. Yep. Uh, so we've got a question from... Uh, thanks, mate. Well done. I got a question from the from the stream, from the chat uh, to ask Val whether or not in the US Macca's trays are the standard for carrying armies at tournaments. I'm not sure what a Macca's tray is. <laughs> so you may see a symbol on that black tray in the top left hand corner. Um, uh, this one. <laughs> I'm on about a. 40-second delay, so I can't wait to see the... Uh, oh, is this like a, is like, is this like a, a Rubbermaid tray. or a Tupperware? It's a... Oh, sorry, no. The, the black tray is a McDonald's. Yeah, I should have said, oh, said McDonald's. Yeah. I should have yes. said McDonald's. Although, yes, 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 yes. Although up here, often you will see that they are lovingly flocked, sometimes textured. Sorry, they flocked. Oh, really? We hobby on them. We, we hobby on the McDonald's. Yeah. Next also, level. McDonald's tray is an excellent alternative uh, sled or toboggan in the winter time. Ah, uh, see, I've uh, I've gone um, bodyboarding with uh, with with McDonald's trays. So yeah, in the summer, uh, uh, with uh, at the beach. Nice. All right. So S summer. I, I'm not sure. I've never heard. What is the summer? <laughs> the beaches. Uh, well, yesterday was a 45 degree day, which is like 110 plus degrees Fahrenheit. So that was uh, that was pretty I brutal. Speak, I speak Celsius. All right. All right good. I'm, I'm sorry. Off. Apologies. <laughs> you're you're also civilized. colonial. I, <laughs> I, I thought I heard nation. yesterday. I thought I heard yesterday. You guys saying it's like 100 and something outside, and then 90 something inside. Yeah. So it was 109 outside and 95 inside. Which would That's translate, translate. You guys are playing Warhammer. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. 30. And trans, that translates into what? 44, 43. Oh, it was horrible. Outside. It was horrible. We had we had That's players like, inside that were just a wet t-shirt contest. Without the hose, like that was just <laughs> soaked. That was soaked. Hope. That's horrible. No, no, I can't say that. Um, no, 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 no. That's like that's like that's like Forge World wilting at some point. Yeah, yeah. Resin models, actually, that would be really interesting. How many um, uh, resin swords 
uh, no Flopped longer, over. yeah. Flaccid sword. They, they started off as a, as a standard sword, and now they're like a, a scimitar. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a wet noodle. Um, yeah. We might wrap this baby up and get some serious data entry going, yeah. so that when you guys come back in about 40 minutes, we've got some serious deep diving stats to talk to go to. Yeah, so we'll, at a bare minimum, we'll have the first four rounds of data uh, in Down Under Pairings and doing uh, a deep dive on stats. Uh, our goal is to also have uh, round, round. round four in there as well, but um, no, round Bars. five in there as well, but it's going to come down to how many games go to time. Uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, and we'll yeah. do our best. All right, peace out, guys. Thanks very much for joining, uh, joining us in, Val, and uh, hopefully we'll Absolutely, we'll, uh, we'll it was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. You'll hear his dulcet tones uh, sooner than you would like or not soon enough. <laughs> All right, uh, and I'll say peace out. Peace.